I'm good at that. <laughs> Facebook is doing that really, really well for us right now. All right, so it is live. I'm going to send you the link. Cool. Then I'm going to do a quick timeout. I'm going to run over there, post it. I'll be back in about. Okay, I don't know. Hold on a second. Yep. There we go. Okay, so we All are right, live. So it is Facebook. live. Cool. Or we're live on YouTube. Here, we go. Here comes the link. Hey guys, we're uh, getting some things set up right now, uh, but join us in a minute and we'll uh, have a live broadcast with Mike Batka from Kawhi Disc Golf. Just getting things in order here. Feel free to join us in chat. We have the live chat going on YouTube right now. Um, so you can actually uh, join us, ask questions. We love it whenever you ask questions. Uh, we'll definitely make sure that we read them. Um, let's see, it looks like we're starting to get more people watching. I'm gonna go ahead and share it on mine as well. Yeah, I just shared it to Facebook. We're live on YouTube. And Mike will be joining us shortly. All right. It's like we have a few people watching us right now. Guys, hold on. We'll... Uh, be getting to the interview here in a moment. Hey, it's the Disc Golf Nerd. He's saying, what's up, guys? How's it going? I'm great. Hey. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it was a rainy day here in Madison. Hot, humid, rainy, tons of mosquitoes, but it was great. Excellent. Are you ready, Brian? I think we're ready. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all good. Are you going to monitor you, YouTube chat? I'll monitor Facebook. That sounds good. Do you want me to run over there and do a quick post? Yeah, yeah go yeah, right ahead. Real quick? I'll okay, we'll cool. set it up. Give me a time out. I'll be back in about. I'll be back in about sixty to ninety seconds. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> time and go. go. Oh, no watch. <laughs> so hey, everybody, we got a big interview. I've been. I can't tell you how long I've been trying to get this interview together. I'm really excited. If you know anything about. Madison, Wisconsin Disc Golf, you know a lot about Mike. Um, we'll talk a lot about his store. Even on the, the picture, you can see his bag wall there. Uh, very impressive, very well merchandised store. And we're going to tell the story of how he got up to this point. How did he get into the game? How did he start a store? Uh, what are some things that he's doing locally uh, to grow the store? Oops, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did are you, you send me that link? Yeah, did you get it through Facebook chat? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking through um, my messages, my inbox. I don't know if chat is set up on mine. Let me uh, through the same uh, same messenger we were. Yes. No, I just I just sent a message to you saying, "Did you send the link?" Did you send me a link? Hey, it looks like I did not. So, <laughs> cool. I'm not. I'm not insane. Okay. Cool. I, I swear that I hit. Uh, there we go. I'll get cool. All right. When you get back there, it'll be there. Okay, cool. Thank you. I did not. The Disc Golf Nerd's asking us uh, how long have we been doing live broadcasts. That's uh, We've been doing them off and on for the past few months. We've been giving it uh, kind of a, a little try. Um, I think if this is a better format than the uh, these podcasts where we're, um, you know, broadcasting uh, and then editing them and this is more of a personal, like interactive type of experience. So I think it's uh, really cool to do it this way. So make sure you send in questions. Um, we have Xander. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. I think it's Eden. And uh, he's asking uh, how we're doing. I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us tonight. This is going to, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, we were just talking with Mike a little bit, getting set up and everything. And it sounds like really interesting person to interview here. So, uh, definitely be excited. 
Yeah, if you've ever been interested, uh, you've heard my story on some of the podcasts before. Uh, I spent a lot of time running a skateboard shop, so uh, I'm, some, I'm sure there's some similarities between uh, what he's doing at the level that he's doing it at. Uh, uh, we, we'll kind of talk about the, the disc and how he has it organized. Uh, the, the shop is very well merchandised, so uh, we're going to get into all of that, but we're going to tell the backstory of how he got up to this point. So here he is, Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yep, just just got the word out. So that is now uh, just posted to our Facebook page to alert all the folks that follow us on Facebook that uh, we are live for uh, about the next hour or so. Excellent. Collectively, it's about 15,000 people between cool. uh, your over 8,500 fans. We just broke 7,000 today. Uh, so uh, we should reach some people in the disc golf world tonight. Awesome. So Sweet. Love if it. you're out there and you're enjoy- you're going to like what I guarantee you're going to like what you're going to hear tonight, uh, make sure you share this interview with your friends. Tag Glide Disc Golf, tag Disc Golf Examiner. Let them know that this is the kind of content you're looking for and that this is the kind of content you want more of. That helps us. It tells us, you know, what to produce more of. And it helps Mike, you know, spread the, the word of his shop and grow disc golf, definitely in Madison, Wisconsin. As I like to say, spread the gospel of Glide. That's it. <laughs> yeah, got it. So for those of you who followed our podcast, uh, one of the things we always do is first we're going to introduce you. Mike, Mike, absolutely welcome to the show. Um, what Mike and I were joking about before the show started is this interview is three years in the making. Uh, I reached out to him. One of the first people I ever reached out to um, when we started Disc Golf Examiner, um, I saw pictures of the shop and I was like, oh my goodness, it's I never saw a shop so well merchandised and organized. And I was like, this is this is like top level disc golf shop. And we went back and forth a little bit. I sent some questions. He sent some questions. He got busy. I got busy. Um, disc golf examiner kind of went on a hiatus. And then he reached back out to me. And then we weren't doing anything. And um, I mean, this really was back and forth for over three years. Uh, I'm so glad that it's finally working out. And uh, I'm glad you could join us tonight. Well, uh, first of all, you're making me blush here. You, you, <laughs> thank you for the kind words. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think back and, um, you know, when we first started this this process, I had a little baby boy. And now I have a little boy with another little baby boy. And, uh, yeah, from the, the timing that working out to um, hiatus to shop remodeling to you name it. So, uh, no, I was, I was kind of chuckling about that um, maybe a half hour, hour ago as we were kind of getting ready to – to uh to hook up here so i i thank you for your time um yeah i'm i'm excited to be here and uh yeah looking forward to it so i thank everyone who uh is taking the time to watch us tonight excellent and, and one of the things we always start at every time we bring somebody new into the show is we always start at the beginning we want to hear your story and how you got to this point and we want to know how did you get started playing disc golf do you remember the first time you went out absolutely absolutely so um I'll even go back a little further. So, so um, for for those who who don't know uh, about Glide, we're a disc golf pro shop and uh, disc golf apparel line here uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, I've been I've been running this shop now for uh, our over nine years. It's our tenth season. Um, and I was born uh, in Chicago, lived there for eight years. My family then moved north, about two hours north of Madison, to a town, Wausau, Wisconsin. Um, kind of small, small, medium sized town. Um, I went to the only high school in America with two NFL hall of famers. I don't know if that's still the case. I think it is. Um, and like you like say their names and most people don't even know who they are. So Steve Otto and Elroy crazy legs, Hirsch, come on, what an awesome name. Um, so I went to school here in Madison. Uh, and while I was here, I remember my sophomore year someone in my dorm showing me golf discs and, and I enjoy throwing the Frisbee around a lot when I was growing up. And I remember seeing them and just going, well, you know, yeah, there's some course uh, on the West side of Madison, but I'm a student here on this big campus. I don't have transportation. So I, I really didn't pay much attention to it, but fast forward a few years later, uh, I, I was maybe my second year out of college. I was living in, I think in that time I was either in Michigan, I spent a year uh, in Michigan and uh, I then moved to Milwaukee and spent uh, some time there. That's why I kind of really got into disc golf, but I believe I was in Milwaukee. I was, Um, I went to go visit one of my best friends, Nate. He was working 
uh, in Valparaiso, Indiana. And if you've ever been there, uh, there's just, it's a small town and there's just frankly not a lot to do for people in their mid twenties. So I went to visit him and he lived right next door to a park and it was Rogers Lakewood park. And there's a disc golf course there. And my friend, um, didn't know anyone. So he, he kind of went there and I think he joined the club and got a couple of discs. And so he's like, do you want to try disc golf? And I said, cool, sure. So we went there and we had a putter and we had a driver. And so every other hole, one of us got the putter, one of us got the driver. And if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's even more than 18 holes. And we played the 18 or the 24, or the 27 holes. And I just, I loved it. It was super fun. And so when I was done visiting Nate, I went back to Milwaukee where at the time I was working in uh, personal finance. Um, and I quickly got online. I wanted to find out where the nearest course to where I, I was, you know, was it close to where I lived? Was it close to where I worked? And uh, I found out that Dretzka Park was just five minutes from where I worked. Um, and I, I, looking back, was so, so lucky to, 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 to be working there and to have it so close. And then I looked up where could I, I find discs. And actually a girl I worked with said, oh yeah, you, you live on you know, the River West neighborhood. What, what street are you on? I said, Humboldt. Yeah, just go a few blocks south, corner of Humboldt and Brady. There's this place and I, I might've got my discs at the coolest named place that sells discs in the, in the world. I don't know if anyone can top, please, please join the chat. If you can beat art smarts, dart mart and juggling emporium. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I went in there and I, my first two discs, I still remember it was a blue DX in of a birdie and an orange DX Eagle. And, uh, I, I was just, I was hooked. Um, yeah, I, I knew my roommate, we went to high school together. He had just moved to Milwaukee at the same time, but I really didn't know anyone else. And I was making some friends through work and stuff, but, uh, I, I really just, I, I just disc golfed as much as I could. I absolutely was just hook, line and sinker. So after, um, you know, you get started and you're, you're in there and you're, you're playing the game and evolving. Do you, um, do you take it next level? Do you start competing or do you start to realize, uh, was it art smarts, darts, and juggling? Um, wasn't meeting your needs for for supplying this. So, what's kind of like the next phase after you're now you're hooked? Now, what do you do? No, uh, well, first of all, <laughs> Jim from Art Smarts, Dart Mart, and Juggling Emporium, <laughs> who's still there today, is 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 awesome. And uh, and I'm sure if I didn't own a disc golf shop, would would be taking care of every disc golf need that I I have. Um, no, I, I was just this incredibly avid recreational player. And, and I, you know, I grew up, um, as a person who is, I, I always say I was very athletic, but not a great athlete. Um, and I did track and baseball and unfortunately they were at the same time in the spring. So I kind of, I did track when I was a freshman and then went to baseball, which I was more passionate about. But when I get to college, you know, other than playing some intramural sports and stuff like that, I didn't have that, that athletic outlet. So when I discovered disc golf, that was huge for me. And I still remember on a Friday night, uh, I was at Dretzka and I was teeing off. Uh, I got done with hole number two. I was going over to hole number three to tee off. There was uh, a man and a woman sitting on a bench and, uh, the guy I recognized, um, just having seen him on the course before. And he said, Oh, you can, you can play through if you want. And he was, you know, do you mind if I offer you a suggestion? I said, sure. And he was, you know, try this. And I kind of tried it, you know, on the fly and it didn't really work, but, um, and that, that guy actually turned out to be Mark Peterson, who uh, is the longtime course pro at Dretzka and, and a really influential person for getting me kind of really immersed into this sport. But it, it also a guy who's just had, left a really big impact on the Milwaukee disc golf scene. Uh, and while I've, I started there um, and I've, I've been away now for almost, almost a decade, is, there's still a huge place in my heart for, for the Milwaukee disc golf scene. And so Mark kind of gave me this little words of advice. I went and played through and then, of course, I'm playing it like Sunset Friday. Well, where am I Saturday morning at, at, you know, early? I'm back at the course. And I'm, the way the, the holes work, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm getting done with the round. I'm teeing off in 17. Mark comes out on three, and they kind of parallel each other. And he goes, hey, how did, how did that piece of, you know, advice I gave you go? And I went, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> whatever. I'll, I'll keep working on it. He goes, are, are you going to play another round? And I said, yeah. He goes, do you mind if I join you? I said, no. Of course not. So he jumped on 17, played 17, 18, then we played around together and um, just kind of took me under his wing and um, was, you know, it was just, just, you know, um, 
encouraged me to get involved. He ran one of our local leagues that was Saturday mornings. I got involved with that. Um, just had a great experience from that. Started meeting more friends through disc golf. Then took the next step, joined the PDGA. Um, I'm PDGA number 20983. I started playing in tournaments. A few years after running tournaments, I said, I, I was at one tournament where I, I felt we, we did get a little shortchanged. And uh, I said, gosh, you know, a new course opened up in the area. I'm going to run an event there. So I, I ran an amateur only tournament at the time. Um, I will still stand by where I bought my discs at like the coolest sounding place um, <laughs> for a disc shop. Better than Glide. Art Smarts is like that, that you, that you can't touch that. Yeah. My amateur only tournament might be the coolest named amateur tournament to exist yet, which was the Wham Bam Thank You Am. <laughs> and oh, I ran man. that for four years from 2004 to 2007. And the only reason I'm still not running it today is that uh, I wasn't really passionate about what I was doing. And I decided to move to Madison and open Glide. You know, when I, when I got out of school, I have a, a bachelor's degree in economics. And um, somewhat by default, I, I didn't know, I really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I just got a degree and, and it was kind of business related somewhat. It's really we might have a little technical difficulty there. Let's see if he refreshes and pops right back. Well, we'll give him a second there. Almost. It's not me this time. I'm glad. <laughs> no, we've lost Brian before. Let's see. Let's see. We'll have him refresh. Yeah, no. It happens. It's part of the fun of a uh, live broadcast. Yeah, anything can happen, guys. <laughs> yeah. The only, the worst is if he doesn't know uh, that we've lost him and he's still talking. Like when you yeah. you have a cell phone call that drops, you're like and you're just talking for twenty minutes and hello. You know, actually, we have the disc golf, disc golf nerd uh, right now saying that his first disc or his first putter was the DX birdie as well. Oh, okay, so very cool. I haven't actually got to throw that um maybe if the disc golf nerd's on he can tell us how that disc flies that would be fantastic hey we have uh, uh someone named rob lee on right now he says mike is one of the best people i've ever met oh nice yeah if anybody wants well, to hop on we can uh, take some few guests while we're working for uh, uh to get mike back on here i'm trying to reach out to him yeah, absolutely. Uh, Xander saying that his first disc was a gateway wizard. Um, disc governor is saying it's a very outdated lid type disc, pretty straight overall. Hey, Rob, why don't you tell us a story on the chat? Let me know. Um, what, why do you say that about uh, Mike? What, was there a story there? We'd love to hear it. I'm, he I'm hearing something. I'm seeing something. There, there he is. Hey, <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> oh, maybe. There he yeah, is. Hey, there. Can hey. you hear us? Hey. All right. All right. So I was, I was like, yeah. I was like, wait a second. These guys aren't moving their faces. And I was like, can you guys hear me? Um, right. So um, where did I leave off? Um, you I were just saying um, you were running that tournament, but you weren't passionate about it. You had, You were just moved. Um, up and you, that's when you were starting the store is kind of where. Gotcha. Where gotcha. So I think, so yeah, I, yeah. So I ran that tournament for four years, moved here. That's why I'm not running the wham, bam. Thank you. Am anymore. Um, you know, out what I was, what I was getting at is, is I'd always had a lot of, you know, kind of fun growing up and with jobs. I had worked in the athletic department, uh, when I was a student at the university of Wisconsin, I worked for some minor league baseball teams, some independent collegiate, um, kind of minor league like teams. Um, if you're out in the Northeast, the Cape Cod league or here in the Midwest, the it's called the Northwoods league. And I had, um, I, I wanted to go into that. So out of college, I had a unique opportunity. And so my first job out of college, um, I had the coolest company car that is out there. Uh, my first job out of college, I drove the Wiener mobile for Oscar Meyer and I did that for a year. So I had to drive around a, I think it was 27 foot long hot dog. And I drove all over the country and, um, 
Uh, that was a, that was an internship. So I got done with that, wanted to go back into sports. And so I went to the baseball winter meetings, had all these job offers, took the lowest paying job offer that I received. And so I lived in Lansing, Michigan, working for the Lansing Lugnuts, earning 750 bucks a month. And uh, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, but when I got done with that, I had opportunities to, to move to Massachusetts and work for a team just north of Boston and Lowell, Massachusetts. Fun facts about Lowell. Um, birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, and next to Venice, the second most miles of canals. Um, much cleaner city now. Also, at one point, the focus of a HBO documentary called Cracktown USA, but they don't like to talk about that. So, um, I digress, uh, Lowell. Lowell, just we probably just lost a few viewers in the greater Lowell a metro oh, area. viewers don't leave us just yet we'll, yes we'll, we'll so, throw in a pittsburgh comparison okay. pittsburgh is like venice uh we have the most bridges um i think second to venice <laughs> there we go there cool we go. <laughs> um so I, I decided to get out of sports because I was afraid of being, you know, 30, 35, 40 with little to show for it. I just said, you know, this is kind of silly. So I, um, I had an economics degree. Uh, the, the, the stock market was going nuts. I kind of got it started getting into investing right out of college. And I was like, you know, I'm going to get into finance. And I, I moved to the suburb. I moved to Milwaukee, worked in the suburbs of Milwaukee for this very successful mutual fund company. I got a, this series 7 and 63 license, and I worked there for a couple of years. And literally, like a month or two after I got there, the, the dot-com bubble burst. And um, I, I did that for a couple of years. I did outside sales for uh, a company for a year. Um, and then I decided I was going to look into going back and uh, get a, a second degree. I was going to go into teaching. And so I went back to UW-Milwaukee for a full-time for a semester, and uh, I started working part-time at UPS, and then I replaced my supervisor, and then I was offered a full-time position, got into sales, and I did that, but, you know, just wearing a suit and tie to work every day, it, it's fine. Um, I, have nothing, I have nothing bad to say about UPS. It's just I wasn't passionate about, uh, passionate about shipping, and, um, and I, I did it for a, f a, a, a few years, and I just, I, I wasn't very happy. And so I, uh, I, I quit. I took some time off, kind of explored some things. I actually took another job. Um, I, I, Belterra, I trained for two weeks and I was like an outside sales job doing like advertising sales, kind of fa like kind of, um, yellow pagey type sale. I did for like a day. I got home and I was like, no, you know what? Life is too short. And I looked into opening a shop here in Madison. Um, there had been a disc golf shop here in the early part of the, of the two thousands. Uh, a, a local, Mike Newhouse, uh, owned a shop in the very same building I'm at. It was called a disc's throw, as in a stone's throw from the course. And um, and I felt like the sport had grown, the pie was bigger. Uh, maybe I could build a little bit better mousetrap. And so I talked to Mike, and and really Mike didn't get out of it because it wasn't maybe viable. But you know, he and his wife had just started a family, and he was going to, um, you know, stay at home with the kids and his wife had more of the, the traditional nine to five job with health insurance and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I looked at that and kind of thought about it. And then I, you know, I sort of floated it out to some friends and stuff and they're like, you want to do what? And I'm like, you know, and maybe I started getting second thoughts, right. They're kind of looking out for my best interest. So I took this other job. I did it for, you know, trained for two weeks, did it for like a day, quit. And I kind of went back to the drawing board and I looked and the very same spot that Mike had his shop in here in the building, I recognized the photo on Craigslist. So I went, I remember driving through from Milwaukee, um, about an hour and a half West, um, stopped by, saw the space, decided to think about it, drove a couple hours North to where my folks were for, um, a couple days for Christmas. And then the day after Christmas, I came back down and signed the lease, went back to Milwaukee, gave my two months notice, moved back here, you know, moved here end of February, 2008. And, uh, we opened up in April of 2008. Eight. Um, so again, yeah, almost over nine years in business, 10th season right now. And um, still chugging along, no signs of stopping. Has it been called Glide since the beginning? Yes. And, 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 and so I, I give two people a ton of credit for, you know, um, and that's not to be overly self deprecating, but there are two people that, at least the, the birth of Glide, I, I owe a lot to. You know, I, I, I I hate the notion when people say like, I, I think people that refer to themselves as self-made men 
are, are a little ignorant of maybe the support they got and the love and support of, of friends and family and things like that, you know, mentors, things like that. So, um, you know, Mike Newhouse has already talked about, you know, he had the foresight and the intestinal fortitude to try opening a disc golf shop almost 20 years ago when the sport wasn't nearly as big as it is, as it is now. Um, the other person is a guy by the name of Derek Wagner. And Derek lives also here in, here in Madison. Um, fun fact about Derek, his middle name is Atwood, um, which is actually a really cool street here in Madison on the east side. But uh, Derek um, started, he kind of saw the potential. You know, he was, Derek was big in his, uh, the snowboarding scene, spent some time out west out of college. And Derek sort of saw sort of the lifestyle branding Burton and, and things like that. And so he started Glide as just apparel. And it was essentially two t-shirts, two different designs, a bunch of colors, short and long sleeve and, and one style of hat, a couple different colors. And when I saw it, I was just, you know, I loved it. When I ran the wham, bam, thank you, am I would even, you know, he'd have extra t-shirts. Some I'd buy them and use them as CTP prizes and stuff. And, um, Derek's just a great guy. And so when I came to Madison to open glide, it was a combination of, you know, seeing that Mike Newhouse had done this before. And I felt like Again, the pie was bigger. Maybe I could do it a little, a little better. Um, and and also, and at the time I, you know, I was single. I could be very selfish with my time. Something that you know he he just wasn't in a position to do. Um, and then Derek did did the whole glide thing for a few years, maybe two, three, four years, and then it was sort of lying dormant. And so I, I approached Derek about uh, acquiring. Um, you know, if you come to Madison, we're the, we're the state capital. And so you find everything is Madison cleaners, Mad Town cleaners, Mad City cleaners, Capital cleaners, you know, same thing for you name it, cabs, pest control, <laughs> catering. And I didn't want to be that. I wanted to do something we could build a brand around, something that was a little, a little more thought put into. And so I approached Derek about just outright getting buying, uh, buying Glide. And at the time, he wasn't ready to give it up. You know, that was his baby. And I, I completely understood that we talked. And so he and I actually partnered for about four or five years and, uh, the shop was mine, but we partnered on apparel and we, uh, partnered on vending at tournaments. But, you know, uh, truth be told, there just isn't, um, there's not a, a ton. I mean, you really do this in part, I, I it seems to be viable for me, but it, it's not, I could, I could go and pursue other things to make just more money. And so, um, basically after four or five years, Derek made the decision, um, to, to get out and you no, know, no ill will. Um, I, I think it was, um, is the right decision for him and, uh, I supported it. So, uh, I, I've, the shop's always been mine now apparel, everything else has, has been mine, uh, for maybe the last five years or so. And, uh, so yeah, Derek and, um, Derek Wagner, and Mike Newhouse, um, I owe a debt of gratitude to. So I am I am I am far from a self-made man. Well, actually, along those lines, we have some people sending in some questions on YouTube. Sure. And feel free to do that if you're watching right now. Send in your questions. We're here. Um, we have first thing. Rob Lee before had mentioned uh, that you're one of the best people he's ever met. I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, he mentioned he has a question for you. He says, disc golf in Wisconsin has a lot of legends. Um, who does Mike admire the most in Wisconsin disc golf? It's a great question. Um, first of all, Rob, giant jerk. <laughs> totally kidding. No, he is like he is like one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet. Rob, you're awesome. Um, his, his son, Jake, is like the nicest kid. Um, no, like literally just have been... Um, such, um, such faithful backers of glide, just like, yeah, Rob is just such a great guy. Um, so thank you, Rob. Um, I, you know, even though I've been in this sport and sometimes people look to me as sort of like, you know, kind of a mover and shaker here and, and yeah, I guess I am in some regard, I still in some ways feel new to the sport and have a debt of gratitude to those, especially those, you know, I got into this and, you know, for, for love truly, but then, you know, now it is a business of mine. It's my vocation, everything, you know, there are people chugging away for 10, 20, 30 years on nothing but a love for the sport with not a penny to make. And so 
uh, a few of the people here in Wisconsin that had a big influence on me or maybe people I admired uh, or admire still, I don't admire them any less today. If, if you definitely had to make a sort of someone, the godfather of, of disc golf in Wisconsin, it would definitely be um, Don Hoffman, um, better known as Duster. Uh, he's a PDJ Hall of Fame member and um, just a wonderful kind human being and uh, a very accomplished course designer. He designed Elver Park, which is uh, put in here in Madison in the early 90s, is our original disc golf course. Uh, I just did some revisions recently. We, we converted to pay to play uh, at our two city courses here across the street at High Stand, as well as on the west side at Elver. And we're now in, our, I think, our fifth season. You're really starting to see um, over the, especially the last two years, a lot of positive changes in dusters um, made some some changes to a few things at high uh, Elver and even high stand has had a little input there, but uh, Don Hoffman for sure uh, here locally, Brad went um, Brad designed um, high stand across the street and Brad recently been a Madison fixture forever. And if you walk around, Brad is not only, you know, duster to my knowledge is, is really disc golf specific. Brad is disc golf. Brad is, ultimate brad is overalls uh, we have the longest i think running overalls in the u.s here in wisconsin and brad is is really you know kind of well overalls isn't what it once was in popularity at least here you know he's really kept in a life support and has a, an incredible passion for it and um i mean you you talk to anyone in the know around Ultimate and Ultimate's huge here. We have something called MUFA, M-U-F-A, the M Madison Ultimate Frisbee Association. I think there's something around around 5,000 active members that play Ultimate here, and we have uh, one of the best. We we have a professional Ultimate team here, the Madison Radicals. Um, very well attended, a really cool venue, just blocks from our state capital, um, and you know, one of the, the owners and the manager. And I think during blowouts he plays sometimes because um, he's around my age. Um, I mentioned to Tim when I first met him, he's a neighbor of mine. And uh, I said, do you know Brad Went?" And he, it was almost like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, Brad's a, a legend. So Brad Went and and uh, and Duster are the first two that absolutely come to mind. But there are people north of here in, in central Wisconsin, Stevens Point, for this small town of like, you know, 20, 25,000 people have a couple of nine holes, an 18 hole, a 33 hole, I think, standing rocks is. And that's Randy Shukar. And, uh, you know, Randy's a wonderful guy. You know, before there are all these pay-to-play courses, further north in north central Wisconsin, uh, you have Mike Cousins at the Sandy Point um, Disc Golf Ranch and Resort. And and Mike and his wife, Michelle, are, are just uh, two of the nicest people you'll meet in disc golf. And that is the definition of a course with its eyes dotted and t's crossed you know you you go a little further north and there there's high bridge and that's more quantity um it, it's a little rougher on the edges in part um and i cannot imagine being being uh taking on the task of having to be in charge of mowing high bridge but but you know mike at sandy point um randy in central wisconsin um yeah duster and uh, Brad around here. And there are people in Milwaukee, you know, like the aforementioned Mark Peterson, um, you know, Terry Miller, the disc golf guy. I've been friends with Terry since I, I kind of got into the sport. Terry's actually here at the shop earlier this week. Um, you know, Terry's a, a wonderful guy. When I first started getting into competitively, I was fortunate to have, you know, perhaps one of the top two players in the world. Well, right now it, it's Ricky and Paul, I think is, is probably is the safe bet, the safe argument. Um, Years ago, it was Kenny or Barry, Ken Climo or Barry Schultz. And Barry is a Wisconsin native, grew up in the Sheboygan area and uh, lived in Stevens Point for a while and lived in Milwaukee for a while. You know, so it wasn't that uncommon to go and play among a group of 12 of us to play some, you know, random draw doubles and get partnered up with Barry or get to play in the same group with Barry and get to play with, you know, the best player in the world. And that's, that's still one of the really cool things about our sport and where it's at is uh, one of the local guys um, is going down to Ledgestone, um, you know, a few hours south of here in Peoria soon. This I think this coming weekend, and or the weekend after, and he, you know, was like naming all these players he wanted to go and watch. He doesn't have to pay anything. He just goes there and follows along. And like you think about, you know, trying to go to a you know, 
Good luck getting tickets to Augusta to watch the Masters, let alone, um, you know, just getting close to maybe your favorite player or something. And that's one of the really cool things about our sport is the accessibility. I think that's really one of the really neat things is being able to walk over to someone. And I still think at that level, you know, they maybe haven't enjoyed the, you know, financial success that, you know, maybe some other pro sports have enjoyed. I think in many ways they're still very humble and um, I think very much appreciate and, and, um, like the fact when people come up, you know, maybe not at certain moments, we're all humans and have our, our good and bad moments. But um, I think people are still genuinely, you know, kind of tickled pink to, to have some kid come up and ask to have them sign their disc. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, our, our pros are the best. Um, I actually have another question here from the Disc Golf Nerd. We're getting a ton of questions, by the way. So cool. we're, we're trying to get as many answered as possible, guys. But uh, we have some other stuff I believe we want to talk about, too. Uh, the disc golf nerds asking, uh, is there one disc that you consistently sell more of than others at your store? Top selling discs of all time for the shop is what he's asking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I will, I will, um, I will preface, uh, or disclaim that I, I have, I have some bias. Um, I am, uh, I am, uh, an end of ambassador proudly, but that being said, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't carry products in our shop if I didn't think they were solid, you know, and, and one of the coolest things about Innova was when they approached me and asked me to be a, an ambassador for them, which you know, for me was a huge honor. My first reaction was, oh, geez, I don't know if I want to do this because I don't, I don't want to have bias. I want to be sort of independent. I'm recommending discs to people. And one of the very first things un unsolicited that came from the guy who made the offer to me uh, at Innova was, you know, Mike, we're asking you because we just, we want you to just keep being you. Um, and yeah, when I, when I go out and I, I'm playing tournament rounds or, or league rounds, uh, yes, Innova, Innova made products and I'm happy to do that because I was pretty much rocking a mo mo mostly an Innova bag uh, before that. But they understand if I need to go across the street, we're fortunate uh, uh, next to high stand, there are a couple of athletic fields. It's a perfect kind of pseudo um, uh, driving range. And they understand if, if I want to go out there and, um, you know, uh, Latitude 64 or MVP or Discraft come out with a new disc. And I want to be able to speak with firsthand experience about, you know, my take on the disc. They understand that's part of me owning a shop and they're not asking me to be some in of a cheerleader. Um, but uh, so to, to answer that question, so I do have some bias and keep in mind too, um, as far as all time discs, you know, some of these companies weren't around, you know, over half the brands that we carry in the shop now weren't around when we opened, you know, it speaks to the growth of disc golf. It also speaks in part, I think, to, I think the patent that was from 1983, I think expired in 2003. So there's one less barrier to entry. The sport growing combined those, and I think you see an explosion. Um, so the discs I probably recommend most often. So you can go to Dick's Sporting Goods or Walmart and buy those box three packs of, you know, DX or Champion in of a disc. You see them, see them often. And I even tell people like, hey, you know what you can do is instead of buying that, wasting the, the packaging and stuff, come in here. Um, Two discs, two hands, keep it simple. The last thing I want are for people to come in and think we're pushing stuff on them. Because if later I make a recommendation, I want their, I want their trust. And I actually had my, uh, a guy, Dan, came in, sorry, and I met his girlfriend. His girlfriend then came in and wanted to buy a disc for herself. And she was talking about what she wanted in the flight of the disc. And I asked what other discs she throws. And she had the disc. And I said, you know, I believe it was maybe a Roadrunner. And I'm like, you know, you've got the disc. I suggest throwing that. If it doesn't work, um, it's probably the Archer, not the Arrow. Let's talk about how you're throwing it. And so for me, um, my go-tos are uh, when people are first starting out, if they're throwing uh, backhand, I usually recommend, um, regardless of how they're throwing, I recommend a putter and a fairway driver. Usually go with like a, something like, a, you know, a, I put like a DX, uh, AVR put an approach in their hands. Um, just for comparison's sake, I might give them a soft magnet, um, put something a little softer, a little different feel to it and see what they like. And then when it comes to uh, a fairy driver, if they're throwing backhand primarily, usually a leopard. It's a disc that's been in my bag since almost day one, you know. Um, and then uh, if they throw forehand, I might go with something just a smidge more stable, uh, maybe an eagle, 
something like that. Um, and I usually recommend a little bit more durable plastic. So, you know, if you go to Dick's Sporting Goods to buy the box three pack and you're spending about 30 bucks, I tell them to spend almost the same amount, maybe a few bucks less. Um, don't waste the packaging. We just give you the DX AVR and maybe uh, a pro champion or star leopard, two discs, two hands. The goals are learn, learn to get the feel for putting, learn to throw not necessarily a long, but a straight drive, and then learn where the transition is between the two, where I always tell people a putter in disc golf is a lot more versatile. It's really like a putter slash nine iron. Where does your, what range it, what, for you, what range is where you stop using your putter and start using your fairway driver? Uh, as far as the all time greatest sellers, it's hard to say, but I, I definitely know one thing that what I call, I've dubbed average Joe, Joe disc golfer, right? There's the bell curve and these people over here just aren't very good. They maybe, they maybe love it as much as the people over here, but they're not very good. The people over here are really, 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 really good. And, uh, but most of us are right in the middle, right? And average Joe disc golfer does really well with discs that have moderate turn and moderate fade. Um, you're talking about negative two, two discs. Um, and so the disc has been out for over 15 years. And I bet every year, one of our best selling discs is a Valkyrie. Um, with that for over 10 years, the beast Moder you know, there's that saying, all things in moderation, right? Like have a beer here and there. If you're of age, not by the gallon, have ice cream, not by the gallon. Right. Um, and it's sort of the same thing, moderate turn and moderate fade. You want something, you know, with just a, a little, nice little shallow S out of it. And for the average person, discs like Valkyries, you know, why, why right now is, uh, the Shrike from Innova so incredibly popular high speed, but like moderate turn, moderate fade, the turn from, from Innova, you know, also same thing, moderate turn, moderate fade. So, um, all time bestsellers, the, the immediate two that come to mind, Valkyries and Beasts. Thanks nerd. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and we do have other questions. Do you want to ask any more? I'll be I'll be a little. Uh, yeah, let, let's. Um, I'll fly through a few more, more rapid. I'll yeah. Let's hop back in the interview because I really want to get yeah. to the shop. Sure. Um, uh, three years ago, when we started to set up this interview, the absolute very first thing I noticed was your logo. This clean, crisp, well designed. Then I saw pictures of your store. And you start talking about branding. You you, was, you start talking about putting this together into something that was it's different. It's it's different than a lot of shops that you see out there. And and what was kind of the concept behind? You know, we see the bag wall uh, to back behind your right there. You yep. see the disc displayed almost like a, like an Apple store. I mean, what was the concept? Uh, how did you get to here? Um, when, you know, once you first opened those doors up. Yeah. So when I made the decision to just go for it. The, the, the decision was the, the game plan was, okay, you can put a lot of discs in a pretty small space. You know, when a disc throw was here back in the early two thousands, um, and I went in that shop, you know, you can put a lot in a small space, but what you often find, um, most retailers do because they're provided by some of the manufacturers, these wire racks on the wall, slat wall. And I just never found them. You, you know, they go about 10 deep, and if you want to get to the eighth or ninth disc, they're really hard and cumbersome to get the disc out. And then maybe it's up here and maybe it's down there. And if you're six, six, the ones on the bottom are a pain. And if you're five, three, you can't reach the ones on top. And when I was in high school, I worked at a, um, a music store and to date myself, it was called tape world. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. They're actually much smaller than this. So CDs were just coming out. They actually still had, your CDs are even like going the way of the dinosaur, right? But they actually had like the full cardboard jackets. Yeah, yeah they're about <laughs> that, that big. That's even yeah. before the the plastic protective cases. They yes, used to come in that big. Yeah, uh, the jewel car. boxes. Yeah. Yep, I think they're called jewel boxes. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I worked. I worked at Tape World, and I just remember like very neat, organized. We got a lot of stuff in a small space, and so really the idea when you look behind me, you know, is I'll just step aside. You know, when you look at this, you know, a lot of people have commented to me that it feels a little bit like a record, a record store. And that's sort of the idea. Like when I would go to a tournament, I liked the functionality of seeing some guy lay down eight or 10 uh, bins of discs on a table and you could sort of, you know, go through them and, but you'd stand there as it was, it was comfortable and you kind of move your way along and look through them. And I thought that was, um, I like that functionality. So I am very fortunate 
to have uh, some very handy friends. I refer to myself as the, the sanding and staining monkey. So I tell my friends what I want them to build and then I bribe them and, and twist their arms and, and they, uh, they, I've had a lot of help over the years from my friends, Nate and Chris. And, and currently the guy that builds most of the stuff for my shop, uh, is a local disc golfer, Andy boots, who's just like the nicest guy and insanely talented carpenter. And so, um, I just tell Andy kind of what I'm looking for. And, you know, so I, I'm, I'm a little OCD and I like, I'm a minimalist. And so I like clean, I wanted to bring the outdoors inside. So a lot of natural wood, um, you know, I didn't want to slap logos, you know, what you do find, and I'll just kind of give you a little down below, you'll see the boxes. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of your cue in part to what manufacturers are there. I mean, clearly we're here and we want to engage people when they come in, they have to walk right by us when they come in the shop, but um, we want it to be somewhat intuitive. So, you know, when you get in there, you're finding, you know, um, things very well organized and, um, what I found and when you kind of reference other disc golf shops are that I, and, and I don't, and, and there are other really, really nice disc golf shops, but what I have found is that it does seem that there are uh, quite a few people that are really into disc golf and then try opening a shop. And I would say what maybe makes me different is that I, I think I always had sort of that entrepreneurial spirit and maybe it's why I was just very restless out of college for the first, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, whatever. Um, I mean, it, it took me 10 years out of college to kind of find my niche. So, you know, anyone out there, I was talking to someone the other day and, and she was really kind of bummed. You know, she just kind of feels like she's, ah, I went to college for this and I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing now. And I said, took me 10 years. Don't, don't sweat it. So, um, I find that some other people who have opened disc golf shops, I mean, some have already come and gone here in Wisconsin and they maybe see on the surface what we are, but don't understand the work behind that that's gone into it. And they are disc golfers running a, a shop. I'm a shop owner who disc golfs and I'm, I'll, I mean, I'm, I, I get joked around here. I went and played uh, our Tuesday league uh, yesterday morning and I posted something on Facebook. I'm like, Hey, you know, can we get a group together for 9am so I could play before the shop open? We have a rolling tea time start kind of single, uh, handicap league, a disc golf United league. And, um, and so, I mean, people were like, what you play and, and to put in perspective, you know, and, and also I work a lot. This is my busy time of year. Um, my, my wife and I have, uh, two young boys at the end of the summer, they'll be two and four. So, um, you know, very busy with that. And so, this year, that was my, I played, I was on vacation. I played two rounds and I played two league rounds. So I played four rounds of golf this year. Last year, I played six rounds. And then I think since I've opened the shop, there at least have been two years where I have not played around to disc golf. And I work across the street from a disc golf course. Um, but I love running my business. And so sometimes people ask me if it like drives me nuts. And, you know, if I think about it, maybe a little bit too much, but I try not to think about it, but I, I love running my business. And I, I, I really want to make this sort of that, that central hub of disc golf here in Madison. Um, we're this, you know, mid-sized upper Midwest town. And I want us to be a model disc golf community. You know, we might not be as big as the twin cities or Charlotte, but I want us to have really nice courses and a strong club and great leagues. And, um, I want this to be part of that. This is sort of almost like the barber shop where like the guys hang out and talk shop. And that's, you know, that's part of what we are here. And I think that's really unique. I, I'd like to think that, uh, I make the disc golfers here proud, uh, in large part and that, um, if we, we didn't exist tomorrow, there'd be this big void in the community that goes beyond just where you buy your plastic. So um, I, I just, I've never wanted to judge my shop on a relative scale, comparing myself to other disc golf shops, because I think that's dangerous because I don't see, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't see a lot of other really good ones and I want to be really good. I mean, I, I still give us a B. I mean, I, at best, a B. There's a lot of untapped potential. Our, our remodel is like 90% done, but beyond that, there's so many more things that we can do. And some of it's a function of time and prioritizing, but um, I don't want to judge ourselves on, on a relative scale. I want to judge us on an absolute scale. And regardless of what industry we're in, whether it's disc golf or whether we're an Apple store or whether we're a, you know, a three-star Michelin restaurant, I want to just be known as, a, as you know what? 
that's a great business. And, and I actually like the fact that there's this stereotype of, you know, maybe disc golf is this, you know, this like hippie sport. I get it. You know, it, it was born out of Frisbee sports and Frisbee sports really came into their own in the seventies and this hippie era. I totally get that. And, and you sometimes get people coming in, whether it's a, it's a, it's a kid in his twenties coming in with his parents or something, or it's, it's a spouse or a girlfriend coming in. And they have these preconceived notions of what disc golf's about. And I love when they come in and they're like, wow, your shop's really neat and clean and organized. And I'm like, yep. How long have you had this? I'm like almost 10 years. And then like, maybe subtly I'll even drop in the fact, like I have a wife and kids. Like I am a, you know, I'm a successful, um, you know, I'm not going to retire anytime soon, but I have a viable business in a upper Midwest town that only has disc golf for about seven months out of the year. Uh, most of our close courses are closed in the winter. Um, and that also speaks to Madison. We're a very outdoor recreationally oriented community. Um, Madison walks the walk and talks the talk when it comes to supporting local businesses. And I, and, um, I realize that for a lot of people, you may not have a market that has something like this. And for that reason, you have to go to folks, um, like the end of a factory store or disc golf center.com or just unlimited.net. I, I totally get that. And I, and, and even some people don't, we don't have everything. Um, uh, and some of my locals will come in almost apologetically and I'm like, don't sweat it, man. Like it's on us. Like you need a 172 hot pink. I had flat. You want to know me? It's all good, man. And, and so, um, you know, for us, I don't know. I, I lost track a little bit of where I was going with it, but, um, well, I think, you know, for, the, the, yeah, go ahead. I mean, shop ownership is a lifestyle in itself. And the, when we were talking about my history, I had a skateboard shop for eight years and the first thing that went was if I if I wanted to run a good shop, I had to not skateboard. Like it took everything I had to make a great shop, and I can I understand that. Not if everybody is comes in your doors understands. You know why aren't you playing? Or or you know what are you doing with your time? Or you know they see this and it looks so easy, right? Like, yeah, this just happens, right? Like there's no work behind it. You just come in. What an easy life. Um, yep. You come in, you open some boxes, and then yeah, you go I signed home. the lease. I signed the lease, man. I came out, unlocked it, I flipped on the lights, and <laughs> yeah. it was this. You know? yeah. No, to, to put in perspective, like, no, you're absolutely right. Um, there is a saying out there that retails for suckers. And I think, like, there is a, there is a little bit of truth to that. Um, you know, like, when for me, when I started this, and I, and I, I think I was, I was alluding to this earlier, when I came up with my plan of attack, it was that I could put a lot of stuff into a small space. And we weren't in this space. We were actually literally that way, there is a wall, and on the other side of that wall is a space um, less than half this size. To, for, for everyone at home, this is um, about 20, 25 by 38. It's, it's about 950 square feet or something. I also have a small office in the back and I'll, I'll show you that later. Cause it's, it's kind of cool. Um, kind of sort of asterisk <laughs> next to that. And then I, I have a small storage room, a couple hundred feet. So, I mean, I have maybe like 12, 1300 square feet and it's to be efficient, lean and mean. Uh, but when I first started out, it was like 400 square feet. And the whole idea was um, not to get out too far over my skis. It was to if you're going to invest money, invest in inventory, not too many other f fixed assets. And if it doesn't go well, you have a fire sale, you sell your stuff, you get your money back and you, and then maybe I'd be more resigned to go work for someone else. And fortunately a decade later, I haven't had to do that. So, um, you know, we, we were next door in this space for four years and then this space became available. I did a ton of remodeling. It didn't look anything like it does now. And uh, again, with the help of, of many local disc golfers from electricians, people who did remodeling, flooring, too many, too many people to name here. But uh, if, if they see this, thank you. Um, and then we, we've been in here now for over five years. And um, we recently, I had a nice little office and I tore that out um, into my, my new office and uh, to open up some more. And even though it literally, we went from like 850 to 950 square feet, it allowed us to increase the amount of discs we have out on display by just like 49% or something. Oh, so wow. to put in perspective, what you see behind me are 108 bins of discs. Um, they're roughly the same dimension as like those gray plastic 
totes you often see people carrying at tournaments. So each of those, I would say, holds 40 drivers, 30 putters. So I, I say on average 35. Now, what you don't see to the left of me are uh, another, um, well, do the math here, maybe another 32, because I think we have 140 bins now. So when we first started in 2008, I had 33 bins of discs in our shop. Um, we had about 1,000 discs. Now we have 140 bins of discs. I have about 5,000 discs out on display for people to put their hands on. And then down below in those boxes, um, you know, right now during the, the our peak season, um, which runs from like mid-April through the end of October, um, we might be pushing... You know, I'd say on the low end, 7,500, maybe 8,000. On the high end, we might, I, I don't know if we've hit 10,000. We're, we're probably close to that. Um, during the winter, we'll always keep the bins up top. But during the winter, when it's really slow, January, February, and we, we might then, you know, be closer to, you know, 7,000 or 8,000. Um, so, yeah, my, 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 I try to keep it simple. And the other, the other part of the simplicity is I don't want to get too much into accessories and things like that. Like the common denominator of disc golf, right? You don't need to buy a glide t-shirt though. I hope you do. Um, you don't need to buy a basket. You don't need to buy even a disc golf bag, but everyone needs a disc. So you better do discs. Well, if you're going to be a disc golf shop, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you to come in and see that you've got all these accessories behind your register. And then I ask for something like a Valkyrie and you don't have one. Yeah. So and I want a good selection. I want different plastics, different weights, different colors. And, um, and so for us, it's really simple. Uh, do really well with discs. Also, do well with bags because that's sort of the next thing that people buy. And then, you know, we also carry a couple of portable baskets, um, you know, just two different models. Um, we, we also carry, you know, we, we kind of associate with the bags. We carry Zuka disc golf carts, their backpack and disc golf cart. And those have done really well. Um, you know, and then we, we do have, uh, for branding purposes, we do have our own apparel, um, which I can talk a little bit more about later, but we also right now, um, our apparel is a little thinner. Um, we actually partnered up with that, that professional, um, ultimate team, the radicals, and we are a retail partner of theirs kind of trying that out right now. Nice. Trying to drive some people who are maybe in disc sports that might not disc golf here to, uh, you know, whether grabbing a, a Radicals trucker hat, maybe maybe uh, think about throwing a, a disc on a disc golf course instead of just playing ultimate. You, you spoke a little bit about the physical transformations of the story. You know, you were next door, you moved over, you expanded. Um, in that time, that same 10 years, you know, the digital footprint of your store has changed too. I remember when seeing you know, you would show pictures of new arrivals and stuff, but recently I'm I'm seeing you getting a lot more into video to kind of reach out. You're doing vi live video from the shop or recording video in the shop. You know what's kind of going on there, and, and what's some of your strategy or you know what kind of information are you putting out there for disc golfers? Yeah, you know, for us, um, big so big picture. You know, um, there's a million different things you can do, and you can only do so much. And you want to focus on kind of what what you want to do and do it well. Um, and there's no doubt that, I mean, I'll, I'll just, our world is very internet driven at this point, but disc golf, because it's this niche sport, I feel has an even greater presence online than maybe, um, some other, other interests in our lives or sports maybe do. And so, uh, it, even if not, it's just, it's still very significant. The internet plays a, a very crucial role in disc golf. Um, I think that's safe to say. So, um, you know, we're brick and mortar and, you know, often I'll, I'll get someone who follows us on Facebook. I'll post um, for a first run, whatever. And they'll say, you know, what do you charge? And I'll say this and it's five bucks for shipping, whether you're buying one or two discs and they'll go, oh, man, wow, well, that's more than I want to pay. And, you know, they say, oh, man, that's a lot more than this website. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it's a different business model. We have a different overhead. I I've dubbed it the fondle factor. Like you can walk in here and get your hands on a bunch of Star Destroyers are they baby blue, royal blue, like blueberry? Are they domey? Are they flat, puddle top? Are they grippy? Are they a little slick? Um, you you don't always get that shopping online. It's, there's some online retailers that are that are really up in their game, but still the fondle factor is. And, and there's instant gratification. There's all these different things that come into play. Coming into Glide is a different experience than tooling through a website. It's just different. I'm not saying it's it's necessarily better or worse, but like we have, we just have a different business model. Um, so when it comes to 
the videos, um, I think prior to the show, we were talking about how, you know, Facebook in particular has changed a lot and you really have to earn making your way. I mean, really what Facebook's done is there's one, what is one out of 10 people or 12 people in the, in the world use Facebook and that's user driven content. And there's just so much stuff being crammed into that pipeline that they have to filter it. And, um, they have to use, they have to make determinations on filters. And so what, what can we do to raise our online profile a little bit? Um, that, that's certainly, there's a, there's, that's part of, part of the, the reasoning for it. It's to create some good content. You know, when I, when I first started playing, it was, um, kind of had to go into a feel Now I call them these aha moments where I'd unload my bag, you know, full of 20 or 25 discs for two hours and finally have this little epiphany, you know, every once in a while and figuring something out. And, and, and um, and now there's so many more resources online and it, it's, it's so cool. Um, we actually have a video coming up that uh, we're doing that I'm really excited about um, that is really kind of aimed at people relatively new to the sport. And um, I, I'm really fortunate. There's a local disc golfer, um, Alex Shanahan, great guy. And uh, Alex works in video production for a living. And Alex um, is also really passionate about disc golf. We've sort of married those together where um, we just kind of took a flyer on it. And so what we did was, um, I just said, let's put some interesting content out there. I've seen other retailers and other disc golfers say, I'm going to do a review on the new Dynamic Discs Ranger bag. And they click on their phone and then they yap for like a half an hour. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I see like the YouTube and I look at like the length of it. And I'm like, dude, come on. So um, the, like the standard rule of thumb is three minutes. I mean, you're going over three minutes, you're really losing people. So, I mean, I think we're just the three people talking for the last 37 minutes now, you know, because uh, we've gone way over three, but like, you know, for a video, <laughs> yeah, but like for, for a video, we want to keep it concise, edited um, to the point. And so we, we started with um, a couple things. We, um, the first video I think we did was um, in this last couple of years working with Alex, we, I developed a box uh, I, I went in with a couple other guys and we, we had a box designed for shipping discs. Um, it's, it's a little more versatile than, than, you know, one of the other products that's currently out there. Um, I felt we could be competitive price wise. And, uh, so we did a video on, I never thought my first disc golf video would be on a, just a cardboard box, but it's, it's, it's been fairly successful. A couple online retailers are now using it and, uh, a couple more, hopefully this fall will be jumping on board. The timing just hasn't been there yet. And, and a bunch of people out there who are, are active on Facebook groups and stuff have been buying, buying those boxes. So that was our first video. Then we're like, well, let's go to a product video. And so we did one, uh, for Zuka. We did the disc golf cart. We didn't ask, we didn't contact them. We just did it. I made them aware of it. They put it on their Facebook page. We did their, their disc golf cart and then a separate video for their backpack cart. And then we were contacted by MVP and they said, Hey, we liked your video. Would you be interested in uh, shooting one for our black hole pro baskets? And we said, sure. So we, we worked something out with them and did it. And, um, since then, um, we, we did one for grip who recently came out with some, some new, uh, new bags. And, uh, that went, that went very well. They were very pleased with that. So we, uh, we now have a couple of videos coming out and, um, We'll be filming two videos on August 7th and, and we're looking for some different content, not just on disc golf bags or carts, but um, when I see a lot of disc reviews, frankly, again, going back to the common denominator, if I could only do videos on one thing, it would be discs. Now we're somewhat limited by climate because we only, you know, just it's unpleasant here for a few months during the winter, but uh, for a good part of the year, we have beautiful weather and um, I've got, uh, we had a meeting last night, kind of a, a pre-production meeting. We've got um, a bunch of disc golfers, including a couple, a couple sponsored people um, coming to participate. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So, and, and there's um, a, uh, one of the storylines from Worlds that people talked about. We're going to be doing a little video to follow up on that. So I don't want to give away too much right now, um, but uh, we will, we'll be putting that out there um, I don't know when I'm, I'm assuming within a week or two of when we film, you know, Alex has got a full-time job. So um, I would, I would hope that we're filming right now on August 7th. I would, I would hope by the middle, maybe by the 15th or 20, 20th or something of August, we'll have those videos out. So it's just realizing like video content 
text just doesn't get much of a reach. Uh, you know, if you have the right photos, but you're still somewhat limited there. Video is where it's at. I mean, there's go go do a couple, read a couple articles on how to how to do social media, and video is where it's at. Yeah, you'll find videos of how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what, what you're also saying is just you have to do video. Like video is is the king of content right now. It's all about. Social media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we do have people sending in a few questions here. Uh, somebody's just wondering, you're talking about bags now. How many bags do you have in your store? Do you carry? And like, do you have a favorite one? Um, I have a couple that I really like. So I'll, I'll give people a little look here. Um, Whoa. and we're, we're short a little bit on some stuff. So, you know, floor to ceiling, I want to have bags and I want to have bags. I mean, we have bags that start at 15 bucks up to 259 bucks plus disc golf carts that go up to 295. So for me, um, believe it or not. So for a guy who owns a disc golf shop, I right now own one bag. It is a in of a standard bag, old school in of a bar stamped, uh, in of a standard bag that I'm rocking right now. Uh, I have had, you know, I, I used a, you know, revolution bag with quad shocks for, you know, 12 years or something. And now it's like the, the bag market is exploded. So for, for me, um, I look at it in a few different ways. Um, if you want to buy one of the absolute best bags in the market, I, I think I grip our grip bags are awesome. Um, if you are on a budget and you want to backpack the functionality of a backpack, uh, I think any of us hero packs and superhero pack are, are great. If you want uh, a great small bag, um, you know, again, that in of a standard bag I talked about. So but there are so many cool bags and it, it's so much, it's personal preference. You know, um, some people want the functionality of the really large pocket on the top of it, of a dynamic disc ranger bag, or, um, you know, they're, they're super simple and they just, they, they want, you know, something like, um, the nutsack and they just giggle when they tell their friends they have one, you know, I, I get that, you know? Um, so yeah, for me right now, um, I, th those are the bags that, that I, I, I really like. If you were going to grab one off the shelf right now and make it your bag, which, which one, which one do you, I know you as a shop owner, what are you, you talking have... about? I do it all the time. I go play around. I just dust it off and put it back. Yeah. Whatever, you know? As a shop owner, you always have your yeah. eye on something that, oh, I'll yeah. use that. Which, which one has your eye right now? It's, I'm a, I'm a, like I said earlier, I'm a minimalist. And so I, my revolution bag used to hold about 20, about 20 discs. And, but truth be told, I think I could probably get away carrying 15, 16 discs. And for that reason, um, I would probably get the new CX bag from Grip. Um, the, the biggest criticism of that bag is that unlike the, the B or the A series, it didn't have side pockets and it was, it, was really, it was really thin on storage. And even though you maybe carry fewer discs, you still need to carry the other stuff, the birdie bags, the towels, the, you know, whatever. Um, and they address that. And so right now, if just said, oh, pick any bag you want, I'm... You know, I already own. I already own a standard bag, and if I start getting back into playing more competitively, I need to carry a few more discs. I'd probably go with uh, the new Grip CX bag. Now, don't ask me what color, because I, I couldn't, I couldn't answer that. But Grip CX, excellent. Now, you said you might be able to give us a little tour, so people at home can see, um, yeah, all the bins and even maybe the back office or the the storage. You said, yeah, yes, yeah. so. Um, so the one thing you can't appreciate right now is the fact that we are, um, if I walked out the front door and it just, it, it's, it's uh, dark out now here. If we walk out the front door and I, I looked off a little bit that way that, um, I, I can see the people teeing off, uh, at hole one at high stand park, our East side course, really solid 18 hole course. And that's one of the, certainly one of the keys here is that synergy, um, high stand and glide are one and the same. If we were even just a block away the dynamic would be different. And, I, and I've had people ask me about opening glides in other cities and um, the timing wasn't right or just, you know, um, a, a number of reasons I choose not to do it. And um, that was always one of the, the things that comes to mind is, you know, how much of this success is tied to the fact that I'm right there. Someone might be at the course, might not plan it coming over, but because we're so close, but we're for a block away, 
they're not going to get in their car, drive here, park, get in. So um, that's one thing that you can't see. So I'll give you, I'll give you a little tour. You'll have to probably put up with a little, there's a little, not much clutter in here, but so, um, and I'll kind of have to peek off to the side. So when you, I'll kind of back you up to the front door here. So when you walk in glide, um, let's see here. I got to, I got to kind of get this. Okay. So when you walk in, I'm usually staying right there at that computer slash register uh, along our bag wall there. And then, you know, as you kind of come in and you start looking around, I mean, you see um, just discs and discs and keep panning. What you didn't see in the frame before was this kind of corner of the shop. And it's a little cluttered now because um, the, 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 the two portable baskets I mentioned earlier, we only carry two. Essentially it's, it's up in the corner of the black hole pro and um, the new axiom pro it's, it's, it's still the same basket, just different name, different colors, same price point, same brat basket. So these colored ones are out in front of the shop between the door and the window on the sidewalk during the day. And then we have uh, an exciting event going on for anyone who, who owns a, a Zuka uh, product. We have a bunch of Zuka sent us up some prototypes in these boxes of some new products and some new accessories and stuff. And so Friday from five to nine, even though we're open uh, usually till seven, we have, um, a uh, sneak peek and some feedback. We're videotaping the feedback, having them fill out some questionnaires. And actually we are giving away all of this stuff. Um, so if they just, someone owns a Zuka product, they come here, provide a bunch of feedback for us and you just give us, give us their two cents on it that we pass along to Zuka. And then we're giving away all this stuff. So like a couple prototype carts and uh, yeah, really cool. And I thank them for doing that. That's going to be an awesome, uh, unique event that I hope a lot of people can, can participate in. So, um, we already talked about the bag wall, um, as you can see here. And um, yeah, you can kind of see how we organize our our discs uh, with our plexi dividers and our labels. So the top row in most instances refers to the plastic, the bottom, the model. Uh, we try to kind of keep it in, in sort of ascending order and quality. So you would see like a DX destroyer in front of a pro destroyer, in front of a champion destroyer, in front of the star destroyers. Um, and then uh, we've got some apparel. Again, we're a little light on our apparel right now. Um, purposefully, we, uh, you know, we'll be hitting our, our 10 year anniversary and sort of you kind of reflect on what you want to become as a business. And um, I feel like maybe sometimes I sell ourselves short a little bit. And, and I have a great graphic artist I've been working with. And we've got some really exciting stuff coming in. So we're kind of in the point of rebooting our apparel lineup a little bit and do plan on. Um, you know, having both of those units full, having a, a currently under construction website um, offering that stuff. Well, we don't want to really get into a, um, I really don't want to get into the online, um, sorry, I, I really, I'll, and I'll do, I'll continue the turn in a second. I really don't want to get into the, um, the online just selling a, a DX rock because it's a commodity in many ways. And I just don't want to get into that. Again, we've already talked about that, but I do think there's something for branded merchandise with the apparel custom stamp discs. I still think there's some potential in the marketplace for that. So um, we do plan to have a bigger presence online. Um, even with our apparel stuff to look into that potentially even wholesaling some apparel, but definitely getting back on track with apparel and, you know, with our 10 year anniversary, kind of looking at maybe the next era or chapter of glide possibly, um, a little bit of rebranding, which we've, which I've had some recent discussions about. So, um, you know, some people have been coming in lately asking like why we don't have any hats in stock or why we only have a few sizes and t-shirts. And it's kind of, uh, I've, I've sort of been pulling back on the reins a little bit because I, I don't want to invest in a bunch of stuff if we're going to do some rebranding. So, um, so yeah, so this, this is, this is the meat of the shop, you know, again, tons of discs here, more discs in the corner. Um, we carry, uh, Innova disc mania, uh, Latitude 64, West Side Dynamic Discs, Discraft, Legacy, MVP, Axiom, Streamline, uh, Vibram, Gateway. We just we just stocked their putters um, and Prodigy. And I think soon we are going to dip our toes in the water. I think our plan as of now is we are going to make a little room in here and we're going to try Castaplast out of Finland. Um, and we used to carry Millennium. It uh, just didn't sell very well for us. Um, you know, it's not to say we wouldn't revisit it. No, doesn't mean never. It just means not now. Um, and then on the very back wall, the far back edge, all 18 bins across, we have nine bins of used discs, um, 
which is cool because it's it's reusing the stuff. The other cool thing is because it's a used disc, if you throw it across the street in the field a couple of times, it's still just a used disc. Um, I can't let you throw a new disc out in the field, but if you come in and you're not sure if you want a Viking or a Valkyrie, and I have one in the used section, I'll just send you across the street for you to throw it, come back and tell me if you like it or not. If you don't, why not? And I'll, I'll kind of point you in the right direction. And then the other nine bins in the far back are all X outs or misprints or factory seconds. So kind of taking you a little bit back, um, I'll just kind of give you a, a kind of a, a small peek at, um, I actually started looking at storage units today because um, the, the building owners are letting me use a, uh, an, extra build, an extra suite in the building. They're just like the best landlords. Um, uh, they're, they're, they couldn't be more supportive of me. And, uh, but they're renting that space. And they, they, so I had to dump a bunch of stuff in here. So this is, this is what I refer to as our warehouse, even though it's just a storage room. So um, nothing much to it. But um, you can see we literally have um, like a whole wall of Zuka bags. This whole, most of this wall are bags with some other stuff. Um, there's going to be a clearance sale soon, but yeah, this, this is like, you know, the nice clean shop and this is my dirty little secret of the, the crazy, uh, yeah, the, the crazy thing there. Um, just all the, all the, the clutter and stuff, but yeah, I mean, because we can stack all the discs below, it's the portable baskets and the bags and the carts, the other categories we talked about, I don't have room for them out here. So that's where they go in back. And then this is what happens when you own a business for nine plus years with, um, I don't know, moderate success, and you you tear out your office to make more shop room, what happens is you get a new office, but you don't want to pay for a bigger space, so you convert a closet into an office. So you see the nice paint pans in the back? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is what happens when you make it big time, ladies and gentlemen. You go there it is. into a utility closet, yeah. and I made, let's see, I'll try to get you guys a good angle there. So yes, this is all of the power, like, look at, like, this thing is, like, monster handle for, like, I don't even know what gets turned off if I pull that switch. You but, might shut yeah, down the whole city. I know. We might lose our feed. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we just built this, and you'll notice one of the cool things to have fun with this is if I get down really close, I put an artificial turf. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> I got some nice, some nice grass right there. You, get, you don't so, want to get turf toe in your office. So. <laughs> no, I did realize that like anytime I take a knee to do something yeah. like tie my shoes, it, it, it really hurts if you're wearing shorts. Yeah. So yes. So that is, that is, that is what happens when you, um, you own a disc golf shop and, uh, you take one for the team. So that is the, that is the, uh, executive offices. And then there is the uh, the warehouse and distribution center uh, at Glide, uh, a, a combined probably 250 square feet. Um, yes. Wow. So yeah. So I mean, it's really we keep it really simple, right? Like we have like you know seven, eight, ten thousand distance stock. We have a bunch of bags. We've got a couple of really good baskets. The other basket we carry is the DGA Mach Light. I think for price and portability, you know, we have a lot of renters and students and stuff like that that live here uh, in town. We have a, a very large university. And so for that, uh, portability is key. You know, people might want to throw it, um, walk it to the park down the street, stuff like that. So um, that's the other basket I mentioned earlier. We carried two, and that's the other one. Uh, so we have actually a uh, one of our friends over at Home Slice Disc Golf asking us a couple questions for you here. Uh, they're wondering, like locally, how many courses you have within like a thirty-minute drive, and they're also wondering if you guys are a DD buyback location. Um. So, regarding the courses, um, we. Let me let me let me get this right out. Okay, so we have eighteen holes across the street. Um. 12 minutes north of us is a very highly regarded uh, county course, Token Creek or the Vallarta Ast Disc Golf Course at Token Creek County Park. Uh, it's a 27-hole course, very nice. And um, I ran the Amateur Junior World Championships here in Madison last year, and I feel our collection of courses um, were really well-suited uh, as a collection for uh, that kind of blue-level um, Am Worlds uh, venue. And so... Um, so we got 27 just north of here, 18 here, another 27 hole course in the town of Marshall, which is about a 20 minute drive um, northeast of here. On the south side of Madison is another 18 hole 
a county course called Capital Springs. And then on the far west side is the aforementioned Elver, our original course. Now, with those, you can add to it um, some nine-hole courses. So there's nine holes just south of Madison in a town called Stoughton, Edgerton, Evansville, which is a, is a course I had a small hand in, which is one of the coolest. I run a, a series called the Glide Series, uh, driven by Innova. And it's one sanctioned C-tier a month with a, um, a finale. And uh, we, I, I run a sanctioned event at this this little nine hole course because there are two tee pads and two baskets in every hole and uh it's just it's such a cool little park and um so yeah that's so i, I know i'm missing a few there's you know um gosh so you've, you've got at least a handful you've oh yeah i would say i mean you're talking about 227s 318s and then within yeah. a half an hour maybe another six or eight nine hole courses and one of the cool things um that came with pay to play here at our, our county courses have been pay to play since day one token Creek opened up in 2001 <sighs> cap Springs opened. I don't know, four or five years ago. Um, they've been pay to play since day one, but the County converted to pay to play five years ago after being free for the better part of almost 20 years. And there are some, you know, people don't like that off the bat, but there's no denying now that that money is going back into the courses. And, you know, not only are those courses getting really, really nice, but um, it's, it's also brought about, um, they, they took one of their uh, kind of back acreage at one of our, our local municipal golf courses. In the winter, our courses get pulled uh, because when those baskets get frozen in, it's kind of mushy in the winter. It just, you know, in the spring and stuff, it just rips up the, uh, the turf. And so they actually put in an 18-hole temp course in the winter, um, which is really cool. And there are discussions and part of their... Uh, open space and park plans for the, for the, the next five years about another, you know, one or two disc golf courses. I know one thing that's on their radar is putting in a nine hole recreational, nice rec level course that would be free. One of my concerns is putting a bubble around the sport. And, and if you're, I think under 16 or 17, depending on city or County, it's free. But, um, I want to make sure adults, I didn't discover disc golf until I was 20, 25. I think I want to make sure we don't put a bubble around the sport where you guys go out with your friends and your buddy's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I don't want to pay five bucks. And I, I'd like it there to be what I call feeder courses where people can go and, and play a quick round and it not be that overwhelming and, and then go and want to go to the 18 hole, you know, pay to play more challenging course. So, uh, and, and they're looking at, at some other things. I, I, I mentioned that we are looking, you know, we have a great collection of what I would call blue level courses, um, you know, and I, I would really like to get that crown jewel destination level gold level course here. Um, and that's, that's something I, I've, I've already had some discussions with Matt, Madison parks about, and I don't know if it's going to happen and we have to have the right piece of land and their commitment. But, um, you know, with just disc technology changing, you know, some of those courses that were maybe gold level years ago are now still very nice blue level courses, but um, I, I'd like us to kind of get a little bit ahead of the curve on that, not just look at what we already have. And, and again, judge on a relative scale. If we get another course that's like Elver, High Stand, or Token Creek, that's still a really good get for Madison. But why not think a little bit bigger and try to push the envelope a little bit? Um, as far as the DD buyback program, we do not. Um, I, um, I, we are probably the biggest trilogy dealer in the area. Um, I... I just, I, there, there are a couple issues with the program and I'm not going to go into great detail because frankly, it's kind of boring. I, I brought, I, I, I got a couple details on it when they first came out with it. Um, I like part of the concept, but there's a few things I'd like them to change and it seems to be working for them and some other dealers. Um, so for right now, I'm not doing it. It's not to say I wouldn't, um, but I've even, you know, kicked the tires on the idea of, you know, why not just, why just put, do a DD buyback program when we could do our own glide buyback program and, and, and just have it be all of the discs in the shop. Um, so I, yeah, so that's, I didn't want to just say, no, we don't do it. I wanted to give you a little bit more. So that's, um, again, as I think I said earlier, known doesn't mean never. It just means not now. And, um, I, 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 I would look at it again. Just, um, the last time I looked at it just didn't make, I didn't feel it made sense for us at the time. You mentioned some of the videos that you've been working on. Yeah. You're, you're going to be filming with sponsored players. The, does Glide have its own team or do you sponsor anybody locally? Yeah. And, and um, 
just to put in perspective. So um, we're really focusing more on like average Joe disc golfer for our videos. We want them to be relatable, right? Like I've always joked that Paul Macbeth could throw a toilet, like a, a toilet seat and it's going to look really impressive, right? Like, Oh, look at him. Heiser flipped that garbage can lid, you know, 350 and landed nestle up right next to the pin. Like I, um, our videos are really meant to be more average Joe disc golfer, but we do have, um, uh, one, sponsored player uh here in madison who is going to be uh participating in the next video as of now um that person is and then there's another uh another player who's from wisconsin who um is um gotten a little bigger on the radar and um it just happened to work out where he's going to be kind of available and we want to take advantage of that and do do something so um yeah so we're hoping to do some stuff uh one of them is going to be a little bit more about get to know the person. The other is going to be a little bit more 30,000 foot view, learn a little bit of uh, disc golf basics. But what we're really trying to do, I, I find one of the hardest things right now about watching disc golf videos is, um, and even still watching some of the really nice produced footage is that you get these nice drone previews. But then when you watch the actual shot, and you're still just seeing the profile of the disc. And granted, if they're throwing a big hyzer or anhyzer or roller, like in, in the catch cam when it's coming in, if they're doing a catch cam and, and often that's just the standard now, um, it's still really good. I mean, I, I, you know, my hat's off to Spin TV and Joe Mez. I, I um, avoided finding out who won the European Open for like a day so I could go home Monday night after work and watch the final round um, because I think the coverage is, is that good. So, um, yeah, so we really want to focus more on average Joe disc golfer. And really, like these videos, we want also to be a celebration of kind of Madison disc golf. I mean, again, I, I kind of want to use Glide and our videos and stuff. I want it to feature local disc golfers. And, and all of them are Madison area disc golfers, with the exception of one guy who also lives in Wisconsin, just happened to not be from around here, but still a local. Um, so, you know, we really think Madison is a great disc golf destination. Um, I kind of want to celebrate that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. I really have, I don't, I don't have a big desire to become some, um, I, I mean, I have the gift of gab as you've probably found out by now. And I, I'm fine being the spokesperson in, uh, in our videos. It's, it's, this is my gig, right? I'm the one who's most passionate about it. It's my, it's my business, it's my shop, but, um, I don't, I don't, I want it to be about the content. I want it to be about the sport. I want it to be about Madison. I want it to be about glide, not Mike, you know? And, um, so I, I have no desire to become some like, I'm not doing this for fame and fortune because that would be, I think, a pretty um, ill-fated endeavor, you know? Well, with all the time that you're putting into that, what are some of the things you do locally you know, for your local community to grow the sport? Are there um, things that you sponsor, events or, or leagues? Or you know, what are some things that you do? To, you know, so it's not just Mike and it, so it's growing the sport and, and building a thriving community. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're just, you know, it, it could be something as simple as, um, like just as an example, um, we were uh, a local disc golfer and he approached me because one of his friend's kids has the rare, what's I believe, I believe is known as, um, stone man's disease. Um, there's not a known cure, but basically like your, um, and I'm, for someone out there who knows more of it, I apologize if I'm not quite articulating it, but basically I believe it's like the ligaments, the tendons, the cartilage stuff really kind of almost calcifies and like you can't turn your neck anymore. You can't, there's no known cure. It's supposed to be incredibly painful. And like his friend's little boy has it and it's just, it's very sad. And for someone who has two little kids, it like kind of tugs at my heartstrings. And so we're doing a little fundraiser to raise awareness um, for the disease and to try to raise a little money. And so, you know, I'm trying to using some of my connections with local businesses, manufacturers, and, and to try to do that this, this spring, or excuse me, this fall, um, supporting our local club. Um, we have a great partnership. I, I love our, 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 our current park, uh, our current, uh, club board. Um, they're, they're, they sponsor stuff with us. We're working, um, our glide series. They're a sponsor. Um, but we're creating opportunities for them to drive membership. And it's, it's been, great for them. Um, we're really happy about even trying to grow that, make it bigger next year. Um, 
we're creating an opportunity where Dynamic Discs is actually coming through to run a two disc challenge August 13th. And we're, we're also partnering and involving the club to help drive membership and increase awareness of the club's existence. Who's um, going to be the driver for that? Do you know who's um, going to come out? Mr. Wiggins. Um, oh. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, great talking the other day. First time I got, I got a chance to chat with him. Great guy. I haven't um, got gotten to meet him yet. I got to meet the other two. <laughs> yep, Jay Ray I met a couple years ago when he came through. So, um, yeah, great, great group of guys. Um, so uh, whether it's, you know, um, running events or running, uh, we run, uh, for those who are kind of may, might, may or may not be familiar, Disc Golf United, the handicapping service Innova created, um, we've since Innova's inception or Disc Golf United's exception, we've been running, uh, their longest running, uh, handicap league. And, um, so as an example, yesterday on Tuesday, we had 90 players, uh, come out for that. Um, and dude, disc golf apparel came out. So we had a little dude optional buy and doing just some fun things, trying to partner with even, even like someone like dude, we don't necessarily have a formal relationship with. We don't sell their apparel. They're not sponsoring an event per se. Um, but like, I, I want I look at what, what Chris Finn and dude are doing for the sport and seeing the investment they're making and want to help support that. And so we, um, open them, you know, or welcome them with open arms rather. So, um, even little things like we have, uh, just one of our, sometimes, uh, a disgusting amount of time in my day taken, um, taken up with our lost and found, which is incredibly brisk with some of the long prairie grass and, and mosquitoes right now. So like people can drop off a disc here. We call people, uh, we give them 30 days to pick it up. We don't ask for anything. We don't give anything like you're doing it. You're, you're giving it in for the right, you're giving it to us for the right reason. You're picking it up because it's your disc. We don't ask for anything. We don't give anything. Um, you know, our, we believe in like we're disc golfers and I, I lose that beat up disc and I want it back. And yeah, I mean, it drives traffic to the shop, which is awesome. But, um, and any unclaimed lost and found discs that we, when we accumulated a ton over years and years and years, we didn't know what to do with them. So we would bring them to events and sell them for like five bucks a piece. And we never kept a penny of that. We'd always donate it. So as an example, that really cool nine hole course down in Evansville, just um, south of here has two baskets on eight of the nine holes. One of them just is on a peninsula and only has one pin position. When they get those second eight holes, we helped fundraise. We were in an ace race and we um, donated some money from the sales of those discs to get the second set of baskets. They have rubber tee pads and want to convert them to concrete. We just um, gave them uh, $1,800 a couple months ago. That's going to cover most, if not all of the uh, cost of the concrete. So by our glide series event there at the end of September, we'll have new concrete pads. And then those rubber tee pads are going to be a hand-me-down to another course that was put in uh, just south of here in the town of Janesville that just has natural tee pads and can't afford tee pads yet. So they're getting an upgrade. That course is getting an upgrade. And it's just, you know, some people change phone numbers, don't listen to voicemail, voicemail box not set up. I mean, I, I don't get how I, I've called all these people and <laughs> still, we, we most... In the ideal world, every disc that gets lost gets found, turned in, and picked up. But at no juncture do all discs get found, all discs get turned in, all discs get picked up. And over the years, we accumulate some, but we want to put them to good use. We're not going to try to profit off the misfortune of others. So uh, sometimes people look at our used disc section and go under their breath, hey, man, these guys used to be cool. Like they used to, you know, they used, they used to uh, call us when our discs, and I'm like, no, dude, those are, those are all discs we bought from people. Like we still have our lost and found. We don't make, we don't do anything with our lost and found discs. So, um, yeah, I mean, so from running, you know, I've run C tiers, B tiers, A tiers, majors. Um, you know, I'm still kicking the tires on whether I want to submit another bid to run um, the United States Women's um, Disc Golf Championship. Um, we lost out to a well-deserving Lansing, um, who I'm sure will do a wonderful, do a wonderful job there. Aaron Oakley, really passionate, one of the, probably the biggest women promoters in the sport. Um, I'm not sure. You know, um, right now this Glide Series is going really well, and and there's a new. Uh, course that opened up at a private campground that might be that borderline like that that goal level course and uh, i've been kind of looking for a venue like that to sort of sink my teeth into running a big scale event and so um i'm i'm not sure what i want to do right now as far as events but uh yeah just um those are uh, i mean there's, there's a lot of stuff that i'm probably forgetting I just ran an all women's event we we helped um sponsor um there, there's i mean really there are very few things we'll turn down if it's reasonable i mean if you're asking for a lot it's a really small event we're not getting much value i might say yeah we'll support it but we're going to do x but if it's something we get a lot of value at or i say hey if you're running an event um 
instead of doing this, could we give, could you do this for us? And in turn, we'll do this, try to create, do a little more for us and we'll do more for you. Um, so yeah. Well, the one thing we didn't mention through all this is, you know, how to find you and your website is glidediscgolf.com. Um, best ways for people to reach you if they want to, you know, just, they have questions about the shop or they're passing through and they want to meet you and see your hours. What, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you can, uh, as you mentioned, uh, right now our, our website is primarily a landing page. Um, in the process of getting redone, but, uh, glide You can reach us on Facebook, um, at, uh, facebook.com backslash glide disc golf. You can also, um, if someone's local, um, we have our, our facebook.com backslash glide series of events and, um, you can uh, contact me personally, Mike at glide You can call the shop here, uh, 608-285-5190. All that information is out there. Um, during the season, which here is about a seven month season, uh, from mid April through approximately mid November, uh, our shop is open eight hours a day, every day. Um, there isn't a day we're not open. The only thing that, that deviates from our, our Monday through Friday, 11 to seven Saturdays and Sundays, 10 to six hours, um, our, uh, Memorial day, 4th of July and Labor Day. If those fall on a weekday, we generally go to our weekend hours of 10 to 6. But uh, other than that, we're open eight hours a day, every day for seven months. And then the other five months, uh, we're open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturdays. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we just changed that last season. We used to be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But um, we, we decided to, to open it up a little bit more. And uh, we'll, we'll stick at that. That was, that was a good move. So, um, you know, w one thing I, I just, I, I, I know we were kind of talking earlier about the, the kind of the glide starting and, and kind of progressing. The one thing I would say is that, you know, there might be other communities out there for people who um, thinking about doing this, right? They're passionate. Um, I just would, would encourage people to really make sure you're willing to put in the work. And that's, that's regardless of whether you're watching this in a disc golf or want to open a restaurant or whatever. I mean, you, you said you ran a skate shop for seven years. Yeah, yeah, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> right. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a yeah. lifestyle. It is a commitment. And so to put in perspective for people, when I when I moved here, I, I took out a small business loan and um, I got uh, a part-time job. So I would, uh, I would have someone open up the shop and work for like two hours. I would go and work a half a day at an apple orchard, um, just drench with sweat, run home, shower, get dressed, relieve Ben, um, and then I would work the rest of the days. And then a, a few months after that, I, I landed a job, um, doing courier driving for this appliance store. That's now, now no longer in existence, but, um, I would work my first season. I worked seven days a week for six months. So for six months, my first season where we didn't do a seven month season, we did a six month season. I worked every single day. Um, there's one day I wasn't at the shop and that was the day my business partner and I drove from Madison to Kalamazoo, Michigan to vend at the world's fly mart and drove back that day. Um, but I would, uh, I would do this courier driving. I lived off a part-time job. All of my glide money went back to pay off the loan in a year and then kind of build up assets, build up inventory and stuff. So I was debt free within, you know, a year and I was living off a part-time job. And to put in perspective, I worked, um, Monday through Friday, I would work eight hours and then I would work about another six or seven at night. So I'd work about 56 hours, Monday through Thursday, eight hours on Friday. And then, um, I'd work, we, we had weird limited hour weekend. It should have been the opposite. We should have been open a lot on the weekends, but we were only open like six hours in the weekends, which was dumb in hindsight. But, um, yeah, I'd be open from like 12 to five or 12 to six or something. So I was, I mean, I put in, you know, 70 hours a week for, um, you know, for the six months. And, um, that's what it took. And, um, it, it, it was a huge commitment. And, you know, if, if, if ever I do enjoy greater success, you know, um, I mean, not to, not to sound cocky or brash or anything, but like I will have earned it. Um, I've put in, uh, I've taken risk. Um, I have put my own, money on the line. I've worked really hard. And, um, and again, we're not perfect. Uh, I give our shop a B. Um, I want it to be an A. Um, it'll never be an A plus cause it's like the elusive, like you're always evolving and the sports evolving and you need to evolve with the sport. But, um, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, 
I love the fact that disc golf is this growing sport. So the pie is getting bigger every year. And just someone in the business of disc golf, I mean, if you're a disc golfer, it's awesome too, right? I mean, there's like the world tour and this pro tour and, um, and it, it's it, new manufacturers, new discs, new plastics. I mean, there's just so much stuff to absorb. It's really exciting. And a lot of people, you know, for years, you know, when I started, oh, disc golf's about to blow up. And it's one of the like more annoying things to me that I hear is disc golf's going to blow up. Yeah. Like, somehow the, the growth we're enjoying. And when I used to work in investments, it was the same thing, right? I, I, I came right on the tail end, you know, right, right. I mentioned earlier when the, when the internet um, bubble burst and you get people calling with just unrealistic expectations of what like a large cap growth fund should do for them. And it's like, you know, do you understand historically, like since the great depression, like, you know, stocks are like eight to 10% a year. And that's impressive year after year, after year, after year, after year. And that's what disc golf is doing. I mean, I look at the number of holes in Dane County where we're in Madison and like the number of holes from when we started to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years later. Now um, it's grown, maybe tripled. Like that's insane. That's awesome. And there's no sign of slowing down. And so I don't see disc golf. I mean, there are these little things that are kind of blips that are kind of cool, you know, but like, I, I don't see disc golf necessarily blowing up. I see certainly certain aspects of like um, platforms expanding a little bit for like the, the touring pro golfer. You're seeing what Steve Dodge is doing with the pro tour and, and what you see is doing with the world tour. And, you know, um, and, and when those came out, I, I said, you know, cool. And that's going to complement the national tour. And you, you have all these large events in, in, in part. And, you know, I first saw it, my first reaction was like, oh, cool. I like, I think what Steve is doing as more efficiency. And right now, like you need to be efficient for travel purposes. Um, I, I don't know if you can really get all these people on the world tour to go back and forth across the pond multiple times. I think it would be really cool if they made a European leg and an American leg of the world tour where someone could come across and in three weeks play three events throughout Europe, you know, a travel day, an off day, you know, a practice day, four days of golf. Um, you know, what Steve's doing, you know, um, you know, seems like kind of like a, a PDJ national tour on steroids. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of neat to, to see that too, but you know, disc golf is just nice, steady growth. And that's, that's awesome. I mean, no signs of slowing down, and uh, it's, it's exciting to be in this growth industry. And, and so, um, yeah, the whole blowing up thing is it's probably one of my little things that irks me a little bit. Like, Dude, do you think disc golf's about to blow up? And like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see Nike making discs anytime soon. And uh, I don't see us on ESPN. I don't think I'll ever, you know, I don't know if we'll ever make it other than maybe like some exhibition kind of, you know, aces on sports under top 10, stuff like that. That doesn't like, diminish what our sport is. And, there, and as we talked about earlier, you can, it's really accessible for people to go to some large event and you want to meet someone, you can meet them. There's no security holding you back. Like, um, and I think that's really cool. So, um, I, yeah. So for, for me, I, I love, I love a lot of what I'm seeing and, and especially like manufacturers for me, from a retailer's perspective, it's awesome to see the competition out there because the competition is, is, you know, iron sharpens iron. And those guys are out there trying to put the best stuff out there. And, you know, I, I, I look at the disc golf bag market, you know, the, the disc golf backpack market, you know, just a few years ago, you know, um, we had grip bags and we had Ranger bags and, and the cheapest bag we had in stock, um, was 175 bucks. If you want a backpack, you got to cough up almost 200 bucks. And now fast forward to today, you know, we've got 30, 65, 70, 80, uh, $110 backpacks. Um, that's in part because of the competition and the manufacturing, the, the, the disc manufacturers getting into the, the bag market. You know, a few years ago, it was really just these kind of niche boutique bag companies making bags. And now you've got disc manufacturers doing that and other companies pushing them, other manufacturers pushing them. And that's benefiting the consumer. And, uh, so, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, so, um, I don't, any other questions or what, what else we want to talk about? Anything else come in, Brian? I think everybody's starting to dwindle off and go to sleep. There were some, let me take a look here up here. I think, uh, I, I mean, one of the things you were mentioning, you know, people come in and we were joking earlier in the interview about, 
uh, you know, people see you, you just sit, you know, that you're sitting at the front desk and, and they, oh, it must be nice. Or, you know, they see you with something new and they go, oh, it must be nice. You know, the business owner guy and, um, and the, and they, and you're talking about, I think where you're part of what you were saying earlier is, you know, people see this as a, as a growth business and people are like, oh, I, maybe I want to open a shop or, or, you know, I want to host an event and because yeah. they, they're all they they have but they haven't earned the right i think is to do those things because they're looking at it from the complete wrong um they have the wrong perspective of the sport it's 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 the passion it's the camaraderie it's the brotherhood it's it's really your love of the game that drives your shop somebody can't come in here and say i have this idea i want to open a shop and it's not going to work in the same way that it works for you because you're you're a hundred and ten percent in, and that they just haven't earned that right, and that's and that's what really separates disc golf, you know, from from a sporting goods baseball store where it's a commodity. It's it's not a commodity at this level at the level that you're doing it at. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I think you see that in other sports too. I mean, um, Nike's first attempt at into skateboarding, as you know, was like a big failure. They had to really like go back at it a different way. You know, they they hadn't. It wasn't organic. They kind of just said, "We're gonna, you know, there's an opportunity to make money there," um, and and it, the 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 disc golfing com- or the skateboarding community could sort of gave them the Heisman, you know, yeah. um, and and so and that's that's part of been it has been a part of my reluctancy to open up a shop in another area. I don't want people to, I want it to, I want it to have the same feel, and it goes just beyond like what the paint color is, what the bins look like, you know, what you stock. It goes to um, the, the people working there and the passion there. And, you know, I mean, a couple of sayings I threw out there is like, I mean, no one, you know, if you own a business and you probably ran into this too, you know, having owned a, a retail business, like no one's going to care as much as your employees and you have good employees and I have great employees. I, you know, Corey and Benny, and I've had many employees over the years and that the two I've got now are, uh, we're, we're a great team and I, and I'm super thankful, you know, they're back. They've been with me a couple of years. Um, but, um, yeah, you do, you, you like, you can't just look at it. I, I think it's ill-advised to just go, oh, it looks like disc golf's going to blow up. I'm going to get in on this. And the people who blow up in the sport are the ones that are really driven by passion and thoughtful planning and hard work. And they're the ones that had their nose to the grindstone. And all of a sudden, just someone says, dude, I love what you're doing. And I don't want to try to compete with that. I just want to kind of buy you out and, uh, like, I'd like to offer you this, um, like though, like the people looking to create a business to get like bought out, that like, that usually doesn't happen. Um, and maybe in the dot com era, a few people got lucky or something like that, or you hear about apps getting bought by bigger companies, but like, no, for me, you're right. Someone who's thinking like, Oh, disc golf's blown up. I'm going to open a shop and I'm going to, I'm going to jump in on this tidal wave. The way I look at it is, um, I just realized every time you go for a sip, I immediately like subconsciously, <laughs> it's like if someone like yawns every time you do that. So, um, rocking my, my, my dude, I think they call it the stubby holder. Who's <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and they, and they don't, by see, all means. they don't see Terry Miller, you know, doing the disc golf blog for five years or Steve Dodge's first tournaments. They, they see him now. Right. And they see Terry Miller now they don't see the, the thousand steps it took to get to where they're at. Right. And, I mean, it's the, yeah. it's the, it's, it's not sexy. I mean, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a grind, you know, but I love it. I mean, I love, I love going to work every day. Um, you know, even on the crappy days, it's sort of, it's sort of the adage of like, you know, a bad round of disc golf is better than a you know good day at work kind of thing. It's sort of like, you know, you know, like a bad day at work, at glide at, you know, at my business is, you know, better than, you know, some of the greatest days I've had at previous jobs. And, um, it's not to say they're bad jobs, but like, I'm passionate about this and I, I encourage anyone, you know, I mean, I feel very, very fortunate. Um, I realize that not everyone out there can maybe find something that they're, they're lucky enough to be passionate about and get to do. And I, I truly feel incredibly fortunate because I realize not everyone like, you know, just do get some of your passion about and do that for a living. Well, maybe, Maybe those opportunities aren't there for you, you know, but, um, yeah, th- you're right. Like behind the scene, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's something people come in and they'll go, Oh man, this must be awesome. You just play a lot of disc golf. You work at a disc golf shop. So you have access to all these discs and work across the street from a, a course. 
like, I don't know, may, perhaps that's a top three irritable question, like, you know, irritating question. I was like, nah, not so much. Like, you know, I have to, someone has to be here. I gotta make a joke, you know, like I have to be here to run the shop. So, um, no, it, it is hard work. And you look at those people like, you know, uh, and I'll even say this, like, this is to the detriment of my business. Like people come in and they want to improve their game by just buying the latest disc. Like go get those discs and go on a field. Like, Paul Macbeth and Ricky, like Ricky Wysocki is a ridiculous putter because he had this obsessive compulsive, you know, like desire to become this insane putter. Um, Paul Macbeth is, you know, um, right there with him, you know, uh, four world titles in a row, you know, I mean, because of this incredibly, you know, uh, competitive fire that he has burning inside him. And I mean, for me, it's, um, it's the same thing. And when it comes to wanting to run potentially like a glide somewhere else, I would never say never, but uh, I read a book. Um, I still have to finish. I read part of a book. And the whole, the whole premise of this book is that bigger isn't always better. And it's about a bunch of different businesses in different industries, uh, anchor brewing cliff bars. Um, and they talk about how the opportunities were like Nestle was about to buy cliff bar. And the guy like, was just like, no, this isn't going to be the same business. And he, he pulled away from it cost him a lot of money too. Cause I think, I think it was a divorce was involved and stuff, but like I, I would much rather if you told me I could earn X and X has to be at least a good enough amount of money. Like I have to pay for my mortgage and put money in my kids, college funds and save for retirement and all that stuff. And, um, and luckily my wife has a, has a good job and stuff. Um, but like for me, if, if I could earn X or I could earn 50% more or 30% or 50, whatever it is. But like, it didn't have the same glide got watered down. I don't think I would do it. Um, you know, I don't know what the magic number is, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I would like to five, 10 years from now have 10 glide stores and be like, I remember the original guide was really cool. Now that guy just kind of manages the whole store. And like he, all he does is sit in this little weird office, mechanical closet office, and he just like runs these 10 stores. And he used to like talk to you about discs and now he just comes in and out. And like, I, I don't want to be that. Like, um, I always want to have, be a part here on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just, I just want to be like, if we ultimately only become the best glide and the only glide ever is here in Madison, Wisconsin, and we're just known as an awesome, maybe not the biggest shop, maybe not across the street from the best course, but like we're, a great shop next to a great course in a great town, part of a great disc golf community. Um, you know, I really want to get back on track with our apparel because I see really a lot of missed opportunities in our sport for branding. Um, I just don't like, yeah, I don't even want to get into that. But um, so, yeah, I, I am completely content being the best glide we can be. Part of it's still just kind of figure out what, you know, even close to 10 years later, what, what that is. Um, but you know, if, if it ends up just being an incredibly uh, well-run disc golf shop that the, the, the local disc golf community can be proud of and when people are passing through, they make this a destination because they want to come check it out, meet us and buy a disc and uh, maybe buy a t-shirt and look at our website and think our hat designs are cool. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, if, if, if that can be our mark, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that, you know. For now, we'll see. I mean, my feelings, I reserve the right, I reserve the right to change, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the little, the, just the one thing I'll say earlier, you talked about the whole entitlement thing. Like people feel, you know, if they're going to own a shop, they're entitled to getting a piece of the pie. And uh, I always remember, you know, people, I think mistake, there's that, you know, we are entitled, I, I, I just the, the term entitlement drives me nuts, but we're entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? And people sometimes mistake the fact that we're entitled to life, liberty, not happiness, the pursuit of happiness. And I'm entitled to the right to like, try to open a business and try to make this work and try to, you know, create this thing for myself. But I'm not entitled to it working and it, me being happy. I mean, a lot of businesses don't work out that way, but you are entitled to the shot. And so I don't know. I've just always felt like I kept the horse in front of the cart and like you do it the right way. You make money by treating like, I have simple rules. Like, you know, you come in, like greet people, ask them how they're doing, you know, ask them if you can help, um, give them space. If they need space, if they need their hand held, hold their hand, um, you know, do all these things. Like we, you know, our, our value proposition here at Glide, is it like low cost leader? I mean, we're, we're less than our, our, 
MSRP Dick Sporting Goods that sells Innova. But like our value is a great location next to a course in a great town in Madison with this great disc golf community. It's knowledgeable staff. It's giving back to the sport. It's a great selection at fair prices. Like that's our value. Um, you know, that's, that's something I want our locals to be proud of. That's like the mark we want to leave. And, and we want to get bigger and better. Um, but I always think bigger is all like we do. So I still want to get bigger and better, but I don't think bigger always means better or more of something means better. Um, and yeah, if people want to go into it, if you just think you're going to like ride the wave of popularity in disc golf and make a bunch of money, good luck. I mean, there's, <laughs> you can see, I, I can, I can tell right off the bat sometimes when I see something, whether it's going to be a flash in the pan or not, um, you know, I've been proven wrong, but I've been right about most of them. My, my, my radar at this point is pretty, pretty tuned in, got the disc golf market. You know, I got my finger on the pulse. Well, I think the the last part of that really is a sound bite you should use over and over again. It's it's about your passion. It's about your staff. It's about being able to to have a central hub for your community, and that's what Glide Disc Golf is. Mike, I think that's just the perfect way to end it. I, I want to thank you uh, so much for joining us. Yeah, we asked for an hour, and you actually gave us an hour and forty minutes. So, uh, got you know, thank one, you get so, one. so much for your time. Um, it's GlideDiscGolf.com. It's on Facebook. You can even email Mike at mike at glidediscgolf.com. Anything else? I, I, I think we've covered it all tonight. No, in, in pure, if you know anyone who knows me, in pure Mike Batka fashion, <laughs> like as long as it, we said an hour, so as long as we like keep it to an hour 59, in my mind, I still kind of kept it to an hour. That's about an hour. <laughs> yeah. But here's, here's here, the ironic part of it is this. When I run tournaments, I am like – Johnny on the spot, unless I have a ton to say, like I keep my player meetings like to the point, like shut up, give me, give me your attention and I'll get you on the course. But oh, hold on. <laughs> there we go. You're back. All, yeah. yeah. Surprised I hadn't done that earlier. So, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to think of any, any parting shot. I mean, I just, I, I love, I do. I love where the sport's at. I love where the sport's growing. I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, you know, and I, yeah, I'm, you know, if anyone wants to reach me, like, yeah, you can reach me through Facebook, um, through our glide site. You can reach me personally, Mike Batka. Um, you can call us at the shop, stop by. We'd love to see you. I mean, again, that's our biggest thing is, you know, finding an opportunity. So if you're finding your way, you know, luckily for people that are making their way, you know, from Chicago, you know, we, we just kind of in this middle of this triangle between Milwaukee and Chicago and the twin cities. And, and really we're like five minutes off of an interstate. So for people that are going, uh, and traveling, it's, it's a quick, it's a quick little way to get here. But, um, yeah, I, you know, as you can see, I, I've just, I, I've been immersed in this. I've been playing since, 2000 been um i think playing in tournaments maybe since 01 or 02 running tournaments since 04 um running the shop since 08 you know this has been a big part of my life i kind of you know was even scrolling through cleaning up my my phone one day and uh i just blown away at like 95 percent of the people that are contacts in my phone are disc golf related <laughs> and um yeah you know it's it's cool um so I don't know. I, I could wax poetic, but I think it would become more wax and less poetic as I went on. So I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But no, like I, I thank you guys. I'm finally, I'm glad we could finally connect. Um, I, you know, if, if anyone, I think the two, the two videos that we are coming out with, like, um, and this isn't some shameless plug for some direct sale. I think this is just going to be really good content, but I really just don't want to spoil it. Cause I, I, I'd rather under promise and over deliver. So we have a couple cool videos we're shooting on August 7th. Um, hopefully they'll be out around the middle of August. And, uh, you know, if you follow, if you follow us on Facebook, we'll be putting, uh, we'll be downloading them directly to our, our, our Facebook page. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think they'll be pretty cool. And we're hoping for a lot more, you know, you mentioned earlier, I guess the whole, you know, where are we going with this video thing? And we, I mean, I think I've got a notebook page full of ideas. And, you know, even if I literally take the 50 and I pull out the top 20, they're all, I think, really, really solid, good content. Um, I'm either seeing not done or I'm not seeing done as well as I think it, it needs to be or should be or could be. 
Um, so yeah, we want to, we want to kind of get into that a little bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're just looking for the shop to get the shop to always, always improve. Um, it's usually small incremental things, you know, we're kind of as close as we are. We're, we're close, but, uh, apparel, we took a big step back and we're, we're relaunching going to be miles ahead of where we used to be. And that'll be here in the shop and online. And, you know, even if someone's a retailer and they think they might want something, uh, maybe wholesale opportunities, you know, to contact us, but now I'm becoming all pluggy and. <laughs> well, Hey, I do want to yeah. mention, uh, you must be doing something right because you have a lot of fans online saying some really nice things about you. So, um, just want to well, say, you know, that's, that's showing. <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, I'm not perfect. No. And, and, and um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm some patron saint of disc golf. And, um, you know, I, I, I would, I guess my one little public service announcement. So to all those people that did say something nice, like Rob Lee and stuff, I, I, it does, it truly means something. Um, it, it means a lot, but, uh, I would really tell people to find out how you can give back, whether it's, you know, even today I, I sent my, my friend a text, a guy came in to sell us some used discs and, um, one of them had his name on it. I said, Oh, where did you find this? And he goes, Oh, I found it. And I said, Oh, that's actually a friend of mine's disc. And, um, I said, I'll get it back to him. He goes, okay, cool. That's fine. So I sent my friend a text, Jake, uh, Jake Newhouse, his brother, um, is a, a dynamic disc sponsored player actually played in the wham bam. Thank you. Am years ago. Now he's become, you know, he's in the lead card at GBO this year. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, and Jake's response was, gosh, you know, I don't even remember. I, I might've sold that as a disc to you or whatever. And, and I like, well, I'll give you store credit for it again. He's like, no, you know what? Give someone else's store credit. I said, well, it's a great beginner friendly disc. It's a, it's a glow opto river. Why don't I give it to somebody? He's like, cool, do that. Um, just even like giving a kid a disc, taking the time, you see someone on the course that's just got terrible mechanics and can probably like give them a quick fix to maybe help them throw from a hundred feet to 150 feet. Um, you'd be surprised. That might be the little thing that pushes someone over the edge. that becomes this, you know, becomes this lifelong sport for them. Um, and so I don't know. I just encourage you like, you know, leave the course a little cleaner than what you found it, you know, consider just giving like give to get a little bit. And, and that's that balance of, of giving to get. And I think, if you get in the mindset of give to get, I mean, it is more rewarding and it's a, it's a fine line. I have to walk. I'm, I'm a retailer. I'm in, I'm in commerce. I have to, you know, there are times where I need to make business decisions that affect my livelihood and my family. And it's not just me. I can't, I can't just make uber aggressive decisions because I can't go to my wife and go, Oh, by the way, I did this thing. And uh, I think we're going to bring home uh, $10,000 less in income this year. I, I, that's not exactly my call. Those are dis you know, discussions I have to have with her. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, I love where the sport's at. Um, I, I'm so, I'm not a particularly religious person, but I like, I truly like the word blessed is what comes to mind. I feel incredibly blessed to have found this opportunity to be in Madison with the shop as supported as we are. And, um, you know, we're not done. Like this isn't a finished product We're we, they're much bigger and better for us. And so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go circular and say the same stuff over and over. And then it will be, it's nine, it's, at least here it's 51. So I've only got like eight minutes left anyways. And if I start to go off on a tangent, like we're it's yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> what about one final shout out? I think is you talked about what you give to the community and then you were kind of in need tonight. Um, yeah, with a laptop and a head and headphones, and yes. somebody brought you what you needed. Um, you know, kind of reciprocating all the things you've done for them. So, if you want to give one last shout out, I would suggest uh, shouting out to the the laptop and headphones you're using tonight. A absolutely. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I got thrown a curveball this morning. I had to take my kids to daycare, and I'm gonna blame it on my wife there because I. <laughs> I totally would have forgot it regardless, but like, so yeah, so the, the computers here in my office and in my, and here at the shop don't have webcams on them. And, uh, and so, um, I would not have had enough time to run home, grab my laptop, bring it back. I didn't have headphones. And, uh, there is a, uh, a great young man, Aaron DeVries, a local disc golfer, only 15 years old. Um, quickly becoming already one of Madison's best disc golfers, 
probably if he keeps his head on straight and I'm every time it gets a little bigger, I'm, I'm the one there to, to, uh, to make sure it doesn't get any bigger. I'm, I'm the guy that lets the air out of the balloon to get it back. So, uh, Aaron's a great kid. He just started actually doing a little bit of work for us here at the shop this summer. Wonderful disc golfer. But yeah, I sent Aaron a quick message and he called me. He's like, Hey, what's up? I'm like, Hey, this is what came up. So he, uh, got over on his bike and, and came over here. So he's, he's loaning me his Chromebook and, uh, you know, looking, you know, DJ Mike and glide, <laughs> no, you know, r- rocking it tonight. Cause so, so big thanks to Aaron for, for helping make this happen. Cause otherwise I would have felt like a big jerk who might have potentially had to reschedule. Actually what I would have done is we would have done this on my iPhone and I would have had to between the half an hour I had when the shop closed to when we were doing this, I would have had to run out and buy a cheap pair of headphones. And instead, now I'm styling these and I got the laptop and that's probably a lot better. So thanks to Aaron DeVries. And yeah, thank you guys uh, at Disc Golf Examiner. Thank you for everyone who watched and everyone who is just, you know, supported Glide over the years. Um, you know, again, Mike Newhouse and Derek Wagner, um, all the guys who have worked here, um, you know, all the manufacturers that I, I, I truly have. Um, a lot of, of great relationships. And then with, a, you know, with several of them, I have partnerships, like I have wonderful relationships, you know, with, with Innova, with Zuka, with, with grip. Um, those aren't just relationships. So they're, those are truly partnerships. And, um, you know, that is something that's great for us. It's great for them. And it brings value, like the thing we're doing with Zuka on Friday. So you know, there's just that whole self-made man thing just bugs me. And I always, I, even when I get done with something like this, I'm going to feel, um, guilty when I run a tournament or I I'm doing this, that I'm, I'm not thanking the right people or enough people. So if, if you think that you've helped glide in some way, I guarantee you that you have, and I thank you for it. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to clearly, I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to shut it off right there. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Mike. It was a real pleasure. And uh, a lot of people got a lot of stuff out of this. So, Appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, Likewise, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'd love to do it uh, again sometime when you've got another two, three, four hour block of time. You, you know, you've got nothing we'll just, going on. We'll, I'll just take the day off. Why don't we? Um, <laughs> why don't we reschedule whenever uh, your Glide series comes up? You think you said that was in uh, uh, September, October? Uh, Glide series finale at this uh, this new what 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 looks like it might become a destination uh, level course may possibly gold level type course par 66 is called the wilderness campground in Montello, Wisconsin. It's, it's still very rough. It's still, but it, it is open, but uh, man, that, that place is uh, look at like, it's going to become a very well-known course. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're, I'll, I'll leave you with this because I have four. So I'll leave you with this. So we're hitting our 10 year anniversary, as I think I mentioned earlier next April. And, you know, I want, I don't do sales very much um, unless it's a clearance sale. Um, I, I don't toot our own horn. I put something on Facebook when we hit, you know, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years. Thanks for, you know, supporting us. And I truly am thankful. But for 10 years, we want to do some really cool stuff. You know, we want to pull out the stops and have some fun. Um, so, you know, I'm already looking ahead to, you know, next spring, um, looking at pros- possibly a little rebranding and then getting that brand out there a little bit. Um so, you know, I, I don't know how much, you know, um, if, you know, if, if, if there's something I feel like I, I truly need to say, come, come fall, you know, I'll definitely reach out to you, certainly reach out to me. But, uh, you know, I think going into next spring, um, you know, I think, I hope at least on a little larger scale, be it regional, national, um, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, not even possibly international. Um, I, I do hope to grow Glide as a brand. And, um, you know, I hope that we can have even somewhat the kind of impact outside of Madison that we've had, you know, around here. So, um, yeah. So if you, if you guys want to talk, reach out to me, otherwise, you know, I possibly this fall, you know, maybe definitely next spring, I would say we probably have some, some more stuff to say. Sounds good. We'll keep in touch. And then, uh, uh, just one last time, GlideDiscGolf.com, uh, Facebook, and uh, you can even reach Mike. He, gave you, uh, he even gave us his phone number today, uh, but I, I, can't re- I can't remember those 10 digits, but it's Mike at yeah, GlideDiscGolf.com, so or reach him at the store. 
Yep, absolutely. You can reach us through our website. We've got our phone number, shop number. We've got our Facebook link. But yeah, Mike at GlideDiscGolf.com. Um, you can reach us here at the shop, 608-285-5190. Um, uh, Facebook.com backslash GlideDiscGolf. Um, yeah, we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you again, guys. I really appreciate all your time. Um, that was a really fast two hours and now we are dangerously close to actually calling it two hours. So right now we're at one fifty eight. Darn it. I'm keeping this to a one hour, uh, interview. So with that, um, good night. All right. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Thanks right. for joining us, Mike. And thank you guys for joining us on the chat roll. It was a fun night. Uh, a lot of things were shared there. So, uh, make sure if you're watching this video, go check it out. All right, guys, until next week, keep banging those chains.